When we first got the place, it was, we had a big old, uh, there was a rat snake in there. Ooh, Jurassic Park when we first got the place. Yeah, man. man. When we first got the place, it was rough. It there was, was I mean, I mean, there was so many everything, things living Everything here. was here. It was rough. It, it was all here. The whole whole National Geographic channel? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every week was like a new adventure. It just... It's like, ooh, <laughs> what are we going to have to fight off this month? I literally just came out to shoot and that UPS truck pulled up, uh, which isn't that good for, you know, sound and everything. I'm trying to make quality videos here. You want to see there's a, oh, that is the stump that we chop wood on when the smoke trail pulls up his uh, 500 gallon pit to the house and we cook. Anyways, for over three years now, I've been interviewing barbecue people, uh, cooks, enthusiasts, Pit master, some people don't like that term. Uh, you know, I go with whatever people default to, but I've been interviewing the people that are part of Texas Barbecue, which I think is the best barbecue in the world. Uh, there's some competitions, there's some other people involved as well, but my big focus is Texas Barbecue. So if you like Texas Barbecue, you like brisket, ribs, sausage, uh, barbacoa, uh, all the things that make up Texas Barbecue, this is a great place to see it. Uh, we're gonna have interviews, we'll have vlogs, you know, I'll be on location, I've got footage. Uh, I've got a lot of work to do to get through all of this and uh, I've been working really hard to learn and figure out how to manage it all for y'all. But this episode is all about 2M Smokehouse, uh, an amazing place in San Antonio, one of the best places in the state, uh, not just the best place in San Antonio. Uh, it's run by Isao Ramos and Joe Melig. Uh, Saul just got nominated for a James Beard Award. Uh, it was right after we did this recording, uh, so congratulations to him uh, and the whole team, really, because they, they've been killing it. Uh, we're also joined by uh, Dusty Dwarak and Sheldon Mason, Shelley, uh, who moved all the way from Montana to be part of the 2M crew. So it's a pretty solid group. They create an amazing vibe. They create an amazing feel. When you go in there, it's just a party. They're really some of the most fun people in barbecue. Uh, most of these places you're hearing about in Texas have two, three, four, sometimes five of those thousand gallon pits. And these guys have been serving off of one for four years. Uh, it started off with Joe and Esaul sleeping in the pit room. You can see more about that in our past interview. That one's also on YouTube, so you can go check that one out. Uh, but this is the best barbecue show. Three, two, one. Thank you for watching the best barbecue show. We're here in San Antonio and around me are some of the best cooks in barbecue. Uh, we've got Esau Ramos. We decided to wear the same shirt today. Did not plan that. Uh, <laughs> king of, uh, you know, king of a bunch of scenes. Came from Austin. Came down here to the homeland. Uh, right next to me, Sheldon Mason, Shelly. Uh, came from Montana to hang out here. Also a welder, but he doesn't have that much time for that these days. Not anymore. Uh, and then to my far left is Joe Melig, one of the founding fathers of 2M Smokehouse, a good friend of S. Saul's. And then right next to me is one of the hardest working men in barbecue, Dusty Double D Dwarak uh, on Instagram. And uh, he lives in that pit room, man. He is the dude that... Uh, that grinds as hard as everyone else. There, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of D names. Dylan Taylor. Um, uh, I thought of another one in the car, but there's just so many there's there, there there's so many young guys that are grinding and they they don't get credit for it. So I'm glad you guys let him uh, sit in on this. For sure, man. <laughs> so uh, so how's it going? We uh, we were sitting around talking about some masked singer and you know the Super Bowl just happened. Uh, what, what's on y'all's minds? Getting ready to start cooking tomorrow? Uh, yeah, just getting ready for the week. Yeah, man, we're talking about Mass Singer. Uh, 
Fucking little way, dude. I didn't see that coming. Did you watch that shit, Joe? No, man. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Wait, so, oh, I mean, I mean, you don't have to now. Dude, it is what it is, man. Any, the, it's okay. We're not live. Wait, are we live? No. Oh, that, yeah, whole, it's right. that whole season will be over before yeah, people exactly. hear this. So yeah. you, you got like a month. <laughs> but he came, he came out on the new one? Yeah, he came out on the new the one. one after Super Bowl? Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't see that one, man. Damn, he came. They asked him already? Yep. Weezy F, baby? Yeah, Damn. Weezy's gone. Weezy's gone. And you'll Damn. see why. You'll see why. Hey, man. Uh, he's 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 an incredible rapper. I mean, he's a well, great, I think he wasn't the best, man, but he tried to do that one rock album with the with the guitar and stuff, and I wasn't, I, a, big, I wasn't I, a big fan of that. Man, one. I think the same way you guys grind out good food. That dude ground out some rhymes. He put, he put like, six <laughs> albums out one year. Like, yeah, he's man. a beast. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, what he had the most, most platinum, platinum albums or something like that, I think? Most platinum albums in two weeks. <laughs> I mean, he has pumped out a lot of. He's pumped out a lot of records, yeah. but I don't know if yeah. it was that. I mean, he's definitely he's a lyricist. Definitely, he's definitely yeah, a lyricist. Sure. He's one of my favorites for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, Dusty, he just uh, pumped out a new album last week, right? Yeah, with the, yeah, fu- the, funeral. the funeral. Yeah, the funeral. funeral. Yeah, I was funeral. bumping it like five <laughs> cooking ribs. <laughs> I was like, Dusty, Dusty, right, was, way, I got you. <laughs> Dusty was like two songs in. He was like, "It's the best <laughs> album, man." It's like it's only two songs. No, <laughs> give it some time. It was pretty hard. <laughs> I was like that with Rolling Papers too, man. That I was like, I was like a song in. And I was like, all right, this is gonna be good. <laughs> Jamming that forever. Well, so speaking of, what's uh, what's y'all's favorite thing to to bump in the in the pit room lately? Music, podcasts. You got a little TV in there. Yeah, I don't know, man. It depends. It depends who's in there, because um, you got Jake in there, and Jake either watches some stuff, or he'll or he'll bump some music. Depends. Um, Jake's like old, like, uh, like old David country. Allen Cole, yeah. older stuff, uh, yeah. and then Joe Rogan. And then well, Joe, Joe, Rogan. Joe Rogan's always a two M. Joe Rogan's always a two M. Yeah. So and then what else does he play? And then Dusty, if Dust, Dusty's, I don't know, man. It just He's depends all over the what place. kind of mood I'll Dusty's in that that, that week. ASAP Rocky. ASAP <laughs> Rocky. He'll Daft a, Punk. Yeah. He'll be in there deciphering uh, Drake songs <laughs> and uh, all kinds Whatever. of good stuff. <laughs> Everything. Tool. <laughs> Tool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they just came here, right? Yeah, yeah. we went. We yeah, went. we went. Yeah, how yeah. was it? It was great, man. It was my first Tool concert, and it was a great experience. Sheldon, Sheldon awesome. kind of turned us all onto it. it was so. Super badass. Oh, you went too? Yeah. yeah we we all, went. all four of us we went. All went. Oh, yeah. It was super badass. Yeah, it was a really. Was good there like contortionist or did it get weird? <laughs> no, but it was just hardcore. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, this is Shelly's uh, thing for sure. This is your time to shine. Uh, you know, I don't know if it. I don't think it was anything out of the ordinary. Uh, they always put on a really great. Um, they, they have a really great production. Everything about their whole setup is just uh, unbelievable. The new visuals, uh, along with the new record, were, were really solid. And I'm glad these guys got to experience it because they hear me talk about it. Everybody kind of thinks I'm. Everybody kind of thinks I'm crazy when I try to explain to them how how the visuals and just the music are put together. Alex Cruz, the man. <laughs> <laughs> but they. I'll put that on record. <laughs> They heard me talk about it forever, and you know everybody kind of laughed it off, and then, then finally they got to uh, experience it. So I think they have a kind of a new, a new outlook on on what Tool brings to the to the table for sure. And it was it's been a while since they've been to Texas too, so I think it's kind of cool that they all got to experience it. We got to do it together, so yeah. it's great. Yeah, it was it was really nice. I mean, Sheldon would stop the line if a guy had a Tool shirt on and just <laughs> talk to him. So he's a diehard man, definitely a diehard. Well, and I remember back what like 2005 or something. I had friends that went and. A couple of the girls were like a little traumatized after they said people were hanging above them all twisted up. They were they're telling me some crazy stories about their shows. <laughs> There's a unique demographic of fans that go. You have the, you have the diehard fans uh, that have been around since I've been around, and then there's a lot of new people. So I think it just depends on what generation of a Tool fan you are these days. Um, it's still great to to experience the new stuff, but a lot of people kind of stuck in the '90s. But that's okay. I think everybody. That's why we're all different. Yeah. Uh, sp- I mean, speaking of different, uh, last time I was here, you guys had a couple new things. You had a, a beef and cheddar sausage. Uh, you guys been changing up the menu a lot lately? Yeah, yeah. So uh, this year we wanted to <coughs> we wanted to see if we can make a new sausage each month. So each month will be a new sausage. So like this month, February is going to be, uh, we're going we're gonna to take a page out of our buddy's book in uh, Virginia, uh, ZZQ in Virginia. They do this uh, ghost pepper fontina sausage. So... I kind of want to copy that and like do that for this month, so we'll see how that turns out. So we'll roll that out this week. So like spicy, cheesy, give us spicy, a spicy, cheesy, spicy, cheesy, beefy. Is it all beef also? Spicy, yeah, cheesy, it's all beefy. it's all beef. 
Are all the special ones going to be all beef? Um, no, no. I got a, I got I mean, a turkey one coming. All, all I got a, <laughs> some of them will be pork. Uh, yeah, it'll be different. I think uh, maybe a lamb will be on there probably. Yeah, just the like a little skinny lamb one. Yeah, there'll be a little skinny lamb. We'll see how it goes. Lamb Should casings. Yeah, little sheep casings. Yeah. yeah. Be cool. Uh, uh, Salt and Time in Austin makes those uh, hot dogs with a lamb casing. They're yeah. Dank. Dusty's been uh, Dusty's been telling me about making some hot dogs, so we'll probably be we'll probably do that. Maybe that'll be the last thing we do. Maybe we'll make like big hot dog fan, Dusty. I mean, who doesn't love a good hot dog? Who doesn't love a good hot dog? Hot dog, mustard, onions, Coca Cola. You got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it Chicago style with like a hot dog on the side. Yeah. They have like a hot dog on the side. You can get a like a dip beef sandwich as a side. Really? Yeah. Portillo's, right? Yeah. Another place. Have you it's like go. it's like undersides. There's like hot dog sandwich. Like there's just all this stuff. Like it's <laughs> like it's a side. I'm like, oh shit, it's my kind of eating. Whenever whenever we have people come in line, they're like, okay, uh, any sides for you guys? There will be like, yeah, we want a beef sausage. We want a yeah. Can we get some beef sausage? And we're like, uh, like you mean like potato salad or corn or stuff? They're like, no, no, I want like beef sausage as a side. I'm like, okay, that, sure, I guess so. Sure, we can do that. Yeah, Whatever. Well, I mean, everything, everything's a side to the Trinity, right? Exactly. <coughs> uh, you know, you, you, guys are, you guys are collecting awards. Eater said, what, top 50 in the country restaurants? Is that the one you just got? Uh, I saw something pop up on my feed. Oh, wow. Uh, I don't know. That's something new. I, Is that so, that. I, don't, yeah, I don't know if that's something new. It said, it, um, it said like one of the best in the country or something. I might be mixing two. We got, yeah, we got, we got an award 2019. We got one last year for best like top 34 in the nation that that's was, what it was that was really dope yeah 2019 something like that um that was really cool man that, i think that's probably that's that's probably the coolest coolest award i've gotten so far for sure like i i love them all i think i think just being like just having some of those accolades not ever thinking you would ever have you know just to be able to have those now, I think is really, really neat. But that eater one was was a big one for us. Like that really, that was really cool. Well, and it's not like you're not doing the work, you know. I come here every time I'm here. You guys are, you know, great spirits, but also, you know, running around. I I, uh, I come extra early because I get like little five minute pieces with everybody. <laughs> just hang out. Usually, I just stand next to Dusty and I get to talk to you. I get to talk to Shelly. Yeah. And uh, it, it's cool to see you guys just grinding because. Uh, that that's how it gets good, you know? Yeah, man. I mean, I, I agree. I think it's really cool. I mean, I always, me and Joe always say, you know, we wouldn't be here without, without the team that we have. And without these guys, I mean, I don't know. We would have, we would burn this place to the ground already. Probably. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. Whoever thinks it's not tough is crazy, but I mean, this is a tough business and I mean, you got to surround yourself with the right people. So that's, that's what I try to do here. I try to build the best team possible you know, um, a well-rounded team. And as long as we can keep doing that, I think we'll keep, we'll keep being as great as, as I believe we are and can be. Well, and it's, it's way more than a, a well-rounded team. I mean, one of my favorite things about this is all the, the crews, you know, I just got to interview Matt's barbecue in Portland and he brought down nine of their guys, uh, and they're just having a ball, you know, yeah. a lot of people want to get the hell away from their coworkers you know, after work, and you guys like hang out here. I, I hung out here the other day after work, and you're all hanging out, talking, and you know, reminiscing the day, and making fun of weird people in line, and just like <laughs> having a good time. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is here. You know what I mean? It's a, uh, it's a family. Uh, we're all, we're all really tight. We're all really close. You know, we, we all hang out outside of work. We've all been to each other's houses and stuff. And I mean, it's, it's, it's more than just you know, bosses and employees and things yeah. like that. Yeah, it's it's a family so i think that's what makes it a lot better you know what what do you think it takes to create that you think it's just y your own y your good attitude about everything just kind of translates shelly always says it better he always uh, walks around saying like it's a vibe it's a vibe and things like that and it is man like at the end of the day it's just this vibe that everybody has you know and uh, everybody feeds off of it and i don't know it, it's just it's <clears throat> it's like uh it's like well-placed puzzle pieces you know everybody everybody was brought here strategically without without anybody ever really thinking about that person ever being here and it's just i don't know man it's just really cool how everything just kind of fits in together and it's a vibe you know we all just vibe off of one another and 
go that way. Well, and, and you came all the way from Montana, dude. You, uh, you know, you you were. We were talking for a while about your trip and coming down here. It, that's not an easy move to make. No, it it was something that we had discussed uh, since the old days. Um, they probably thought I was crazy in the beginning because even even when the pop ups were starting, we had all talked about it, and they probably they probably thought I was joking. Even even until I actually moved here, I think they probably thought it may or may not happen that I was going to locate here. And then just one day it, it happened, and, and now I'm here. But uh, it's been something that uh, it, it had been in works for a long time, and it, it coming to fruition was pretty special, not only um, for me, but I think for this, this whole organization here. I think it's something that um, I wanted to be a part of something special, and, and that's what's great about being here is it's such a, it's such a t like tight, close-knit family, and I think everybody here kind of feels the same way. And, and this is a really great place to be. They're on the power. It's on the power curve of, of everything that's happening in, in San Antonio, and uh, they're breaking new. They're, they're breaking new ground on something that wasn't always here. And I think it's it's really awesome for me, and I think everybody here to be a part of something that wasn't originally this type of barbecue here. And it's it's great to be on the cutting edge of things. And I really, I really am glad I'm a part of it, for sure. Hanging out on WW White. This is the, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Worldwide West. This is Wicked the Wild Texas White. WW White. <laughs> right here. Well, it's funny because pe uh, people always ask me, uh, what part of San Antonio is, are you all in? And I always kind of forget because it's kind of a weird shape. Yeah. I'm like, oh, WW White. And like half the time, like, oh, yeah. And half the time, I'm like, I don't know where that is. <laughs> did, did you have to, you, you've been hauling stuff down here for a while, though. Every Texas Monthly and stuff, you keep bringing. Yeah. Cool gear down and yeah, it was always stuff coming with me. I tried to make the most out of each trip that I would that I would bring down here. So uh, finally, everything's here, and it's kind of cool to um, to actually have a place to live here now. So it's uh, it's really cool. I'm really really happy to be here, for sure. And uh, and you might be helping uh, expand the pit room a little bit. I'd like to be. Yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to be able to be a part of that for sure. No, I mean like uh, you're, you're you're building extra pit, right? Yes, that's correct. Yes, there's uh, there's another one. It's uh, it's finished. Um, <laughs> eventually, it'll be implemented. So whenever um, whenever that day comes, uh, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. So we're yeah. we're um, we're working at it slowly but surely. But it's it's coming. Um, it'll be exciting. I think a lot of people will uh, enjoy it. I know we definitely Dusty and I definitely enjoy it. <laughs> well, and you must be pushing the limits to how much you can cook out there. I don't think there's anybody else really out there. Pushing, pushing the limits on a thousand gallon, just one single pit, uh, like the dance that Dusty was doing on Sunday for the last service. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, Super Bowl Super and Bowl. Barbacoa Sunday was very I, fun. That was, yeah. fun. That was fun unbelievable. Day. That was awesome. Uh, it's yeah. one of the uh, most. Game of I mean, they thought they had a tough game with the Super Bowl. I'm going to say the plays that Dusty was running <laughs> in the pit were <laughs> way more difficult, in my opinion. Uh, I commend this this guy here. He crushed it. He crushes it. Uh, always is, is just killing it. So. Um, Especially this past weekend, that was. It's easy when you have a lot of good help around you. Like, like, <laughs> like, like when you're saying like all this, like, when when you're saying like it's like, uh, it's hard and everything. It's it's not that hard, dude. Like we're all friends here. Like we just like come and like cook barbecue, dude. Like it's not that bad. <laughs> like it's like so much fun. Like we like literally we had like uh, we had uh, some like super super good briskets this week, and it's just like. What did you do this week? Oh, I just cooked a bunch of like Wagyu briskets. Like it was the coolest thing ever. Like. <laughs> and then like when go watch the Super Bowl. Like it was an awesome weekend. You know, like it, it's like it's like it's really not that it's really not that bad. It's just like we're all really good friends here, and we all love each other, and we just cook barbecue, and we, you just, we just, you just, do just, it. just make it work. You just we do just it. Do, we just, just do, do it, it as good as we can. And people just, show up, they're like, it's, you can't do that. That's impossible. It's, uh, you haven't been to 2M yet, man. I mean. Dusty and Sheldon, they'll pull off the Hail Mary real quick. And yeah, it's, so. it's something that I've never seen happen with one <laughs> with one cooker. It's it's always amazed me, and it still continues to amaze me at all times. That, that, cooker, that cooker is built for that thing, too, because, I mean, cooking off for so long, you can figure out every which, like, it, it's not um, necessarily, like, um, an, an even cooker, but when you, when you need to cook a lot of food on one cooker, it's perfect because you can cook a lot of different places in a lot of different spots. Yeah. Yep. So it, it works really well. So you got it all figured out. Is that like you use the biscuit test, or that's just from trial and error, or what? 
<laughs> the cooker will tell you what it's capable of and not capable of, for sure. It's too many damn biscuits. <laughs> it's too many damn biscuits. How many biscuits does it take to fill a thousand gallon? I don't like, know, man. I don't want to find Fifty of those out. tubes? <laughs> probably. Probably. That's a shit ton. That's a shit ton of biscuits. A couple cases we'll, we'll of Sara Lee. I'm doing breakfast. So. Yeah. Let you know when brunch comes in. Is that uh, is that in the works? No, man. no, no, man. not at all. <laughs> no, God, no. No. <laughs> I mean, is there is? We just, went to Maria, we just went to Maria's. Me and Shelly just came back from Maria's Cafe for the first time ever. Shout out Maria's Cafe. That was really good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out Maria's yep. Cafe. Is that a neighborhood joint? Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a place on the south side. It's on uh, Nogalitos. It's on Nogalitos. and uh, it's a really cool. What's really cool about Maria's though is like, it like takes you back to like your grandma's kitchen, and then but. You could you could almost ask her to make you anything. She'll make anything. any plate, any she'll, dish. If she has it, if she she'll has the ingredients it. there for it, she'll she'll make it for you. Anything. She yell at you if you don't finish your plate. I too? mean, yeah, man, it's possible. <laughs> it is. It's definitely yeah, possible. Yeah, she'll yeah. come. The out. daughter just like went and got donuts from the store and was offering like everybody donuts, and I got like a donut from like one of the daughters who just brought in donuts from the store. It's like so cool. It's a great place. It's you, a great. You, you got to ask for was it the King Richard? You got to ask for the King you gotta, Richard. You got to ask for the King Richard. For the King Richard. One of our regulars. He goes there all the time. He has his own plate. Really? Yeah. The Richard came through in the clutch. Yeah, yeah. It definitely came through in the clutch. It's a lot of food. Can you give us a tour of the King Richard? Uh, it was uh, sausage guisada, uh, huevos rancheros, uh, fried pork chops, tortillas, papas. Like I said, it was a giant. It was a giant spread. I mean, it was like two or three plates of food that that came out, but it was all great. So, and, and then Dusty got tacos. Uh, both the tacos were really good. So. Uh, it's definitely a place that I could feel like I would go there pretty often, uh, especially on days off. It's kind of yeah. wholesome and hearty, and yeah. like like S O was saying, it's it's like your neighborhood. It's like going back to your to like your grandmother's house. It's cool. It's just a little little place and. Was your husband in. walking around? That's yeah. That's who that's who was bringing the donuts in. Ah. He had the conchas and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, was a party. Yeah, it was yeah, great. Man. It was a great experience. So I'm glad we finally got to go and, and enjoy it for the first time. So yeah, it's a dose five. That's cool. Well, and just in general, I mean, the the amount of, you know, people don't realize this, but San Antonio is growing as fast or faster than Austin, but it's more of like a suburban sprawl. It's it's more like that. But have you seen a lot change since, I mean, how long has the restaurant been here? The building? You, y'all, how long oh, have y'all been oh, cooking we're, here? We're going four years. We're going. Since the name was, and here at yeah, the yeah, actual, we're, here at the actual restaurant, the brick and mortar is well, three. We're in our three, year, three years. We're in our third year, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Here at the fourth going on four. Yeah. yeah. But here Three. but I mean since we've been here we've definitely seen a change. I mean yeah. Yeah. half a uh, million people have probably moved to San Antonio yeah, at I that think, time. I think they were saying by like 2021, 20, 2022 it's supposed to be another million on top of where we currently are. And you can definitely tell with traffic. It's more people are showing up. That's definitely what you're like. You could definitely tell with that. Traffic's getting worse for sure. The first interview I did with just the two of you I it uh, my GPS actually sent me like west of San Antonio just to come back because it was so hard to just go straight. So I had to go in this like big circle just yeah. to get here. Yeah, it's a pain, man. It's yeah. getting well. Not only that, but I also hate the fact that San Antonio is so spread out. So then that doesn't make it any better, you know. Everyone's a commuter. Everybody's a yeah. commuter. It's like 30, exactly. 20, 30 minutes to get anywhere for the anywhere. most part. I feel mm-hmm. like. So, I mean, you could reach us like if traffic isn't bad, you could reach us in fifteen minutes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, from from where I from where I live to here, it's like. 35 45 minutes but on a good day like right now i got here in like 15 20 minutes yeah so it just depends and i drive 80 everywhere i go too so that doesn't help <laughs> or it does help <laughs> that's that's a that's proper texan i was yeah. uh i was just in ohio and no like blinkers. the the highways are 55 and there's like a state trooper every two miles so everyone's just ohio. driving like the proper speed limit and everyone's like Looking at what number they're supposed to be driving, not like here where everyone just hits the gas. Yeah. Yeah. And you and, still get passed up. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, it was just, it was just funny because I forgot in the Northeast, like, there's actually police on the road and people actually have to drive the speed limit. And you're just sitting there and you're like, this is actually kind of fun going 55, like 62 max. It's like the car is not like my Jeep starts to vibrate if I'm like uh, over 70, you know, that, that shit was made for, for World War II. Like, <laughs> it's an old design. I know. She, when 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 Shell came down, he was like, he was like, dude, what the hell, man? He's like, these fucking people on these roads are crazy. I'm like, I know, man. I'm like, it's not Montana. Like, <laughs> Montana shit. people drive fast, though, right? They do. And even even in the wintertime, sometimes they don't change up the speed, which is crazy because the roads are iced over into straight death traps. But um, <laughs> out here, it's just like a whole nother level. You have to learn kind of what people 
uh, do here. One thing I noticed is that if um, if you use a horn, you might as well you might as well have just pointed a gun at somebody. They if, if you notice, if you notice, a lot of people a lot of people don't use horns here because I think they take offense to horns. Because if you're using a horn, they think that's an act of aggression. So I don't hear horns on the highway. Every now and again, I hear a horn and then I look and then I'm thinking, okay, there's about to be uh, there's going to be a something's battle. going to go down. There's something's going down. Uh, it doesn't matter. There's there can be a posted speed limit. It doesn't matter. People are going to do 20 over regardless of what it is. So if you're doing 75, the posted speed limit or 70, you're you're driving way too slow. And then the left hand left hand lane is definitely not just the passing lane here. That's just not going lane. So I've had to learn the ins and outs of this traffic here. But you, you can ask Shelly. There's a guy that'll drive by the restaurant every morning with big like mudding tires at like six or like 6:05. And it's just like the loudest freaking truck of all time. Yeah, and it's like every morning at like 6 o'clock. It's the 6.05 wake up. It's the call. alarm, man. It's the alarm clock. Yeah, it's, it's just like, it's Because right. there's hardly anybody on the street at that time in the morning. And he just comes through those giant knobby tires and it just echoes <laughs> the entire, because it's thoroughfare right through on W. White here. He just echoes all the way down the road. So it'll definitely wake you up if you're kind of lagging that morning. Well, I guess traffic-wise, it's lucky because you guys have, you know, you don't have nine to five hours. So... You're probably not driving through traffic very often. Maybe no. at the end of a day, if you stay late. Yeah, if we're on the morning shift, uh, it's pretty easy uh, to get here. But in the evenings, I think anywhere between four and seven, you're going to be hosed, regardless of which way you go. Um, yeah, the traffic's rough in the evening. It's it's not so bad in the morning as long as you can beat the early commuters, because uh, most of the time we're here before those guys start. So it's it's nice to to be able to beat that. But in the evening, when you're ready to go home, that's where it counts the most, and that's usually where you get hung up. So 35, just just stay off of that highway altogether. Yeah, that's why I'm leaving at 2.30 today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I saw something. I think I saw something that said that, like, San Antonio commute is as bad as L.A. commute or something. Oh, well, I haven't seen that one yet. You and I were talking Man. about it. Yeah. Because it said it, it's, it's up there. As, as, a, as, a, as a Houstonian. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to call BS on that. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I saw. I, I know, but as a Houstonian, I'm going to call it BS on that. What did I see it at? I mean, yeah. it, it has gone a thousand percent worse. Like, the sure. traffic has yeah. gone way, way worse. Yeah. But, I mean, it's well, not. Houston yeah. has his own driving style, too, because Dusty drives, like, well, Mario Kart racing. Yeah, well, in Houston, everybody drives 90, so in Houston, I drive 60. But in, in San Antonio, everybody drives 60, so I drive 90. <laughs> So it's it's, it's I the go give and take. it's the give and take. I go where people aren't going. It's it's I people are dumb, so I gotta avoid the people. Gotcha. So if they're going sixty, I'm going ninety. If they're going ninety, I'm going sixty. Dusty drive is like Tron, dude. Just don't go off the grid. <laughs> dude, because Dusty's passed me up before like that. Just, yeah. So it's like damn, there goes Dusty. <laughs> and I left like thirty minutes ago. It's a little intense <laughs> with us sometimes. It's a little intense. He has four extra arms. He's like Goro, a barbecue man. Like he's got he's got a couple of, he's got a couple of extra arms. <laughs> <laughs> he can do like all these multitasking. I'm like, how's he doing it? It's it's pretty scary to ride, ride with us. How about Cora? Driving is one of my literally. I love driving. If any of my roommates ever want to go anywhere, I'm like, all right, I'll drive. I love driving places. It's just like one of my. It's just like I can just cruise all day long. I love driving. But well, that's the Houstonian in me. I think I don't. I don't really know. I don't know. But San Antonio traffic has gotten worse. But it's not. It's not L. A. It's not L. A. Or uh, I mean, hey, man. No, but it's bad. It's bad. It's a uh, you got a little Corolla back there, right? Oh yeah, 2012 Corolla. Cam, Cam, no, it's actually a Camry. Yeah, it's Camry. And it's Camborghini 2.0. <laughs> the Camborghini 1.0 was a '94 Camry, same year of my birth. That was the best car of all time. What happened to that car? Um, it's just uh, it, it ran its course. Some some, you know, it's it 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 did as much as it could, man. It did as much as it could. But that thing, I, I bought for five hundred dollars. I probably drove it for like six years. Oh, it, that man. thing was a that thing was a beast. That was the best investment I've ever made in my life. It was and it ran on water. Yep. It ran on water. But now I got the Lamborghini 2.0, so it's all good. Now see, th this is what I love about uh, like a cool spot is that you guys you take some people just sit in the pit room and they'll just stare at the dials and just kind of be bored. But y'all come up with like the most hilarious shit. <laughs> Like every day, it's a it's a very creative space beyond the, the food. What barbecue place can you just sit and stare at dials all day? <laughs> I want to go work there. <laughs> just, I yeah, man. Just I'm like, stare at dials. Where's that place where you kick your feet Ooh. up and, and drink a beer <laughs> and watch dials all day? That's the place to be at for sure. I'm not gonna say where, but I I say I've seen a lot of beers yeah. in the pit room. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the stuff dreams are made of right there for real. Yeah, 
that's that's a, I mean that's a that's a pipe dream here. Maybe yeah, one day. Maybe I remember one day. A, I remember one time when it was just East Wool and I here, man. It was like <laughs> we got into a deep freeze. It was like 22 outside. We're like, man, to hell with this. And we went to Target and we bought a little Wi-Fi camera, and we posted it up on a on like a post yeah. right in front of the the gauge. And we we're inside watching it through our phone. And we we're like, hey man, wake up! You gotta go throw some wood on. Just one, <laughs> like that. Was, that was the most. That was the best idea for that time. That was it. The webcam's one of the best additions you had for like for sure. six months for sure. <laughs> I found it. I found it the other day. I think it was in the back storage, and I Damn, found it. Should have hung it up. Look at this. Well, I mean, it's back there. I was like, we'll keep in it. Shallow grave. <laughs> put it in a display, a put it in a display case. <laughs> yes. Actually, it should, with the, it should be up front with the first dollar we're, the restaurant we're able, ever made. We're able to go actually eat at a restaurant. Yeah. Remember, we were, we were yeah, able as to long, sit as down at a restaurant. As long as we would still reach us, we're good to go. We, were yeah. like, Holy we could extend out our, 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 our distance by the, another 10 miles, maybe, <laughs> because of that thing. Oh, man, that was good. Those are the well, days. You should, you should give a little plaque, like uh, pit, pit Hand of the Year or something. <laughs> <laughs> Employee of the Month. To the camera. To the, to the camera. camera. We got to take a picture of it. I know we're actually we were talking about implementing an employee of the month program. We'll see how that goes. I mean, it's going to start repeating after a while, right? I mean, how many people work here? Yeah, exactly, I mean, exactly. Or not, you know? I mean, there's always that one dusty. person that just yeah, what tries do, to what shine do Dusty above one the year, show it in the next year, and just sell the next year, Grace. Yeah, the next yeah, year. yeah. Ed. And we'll just make it political. We we'll just make it Dusty all the time, and then and then we'll switch it up here, and then we we'll just put Dusty again. <laughs> Well then, then you're really on WW White. <laughs> I know, damn it. Rod will never get it. Though. No man, Rod will never get it. Rod, if you're listening to this, you'll <laughs> never get it. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm I'm sure things aren't always like super lighthearted, but it's nice to know you can, you can kind of mess with each other and you can kind of have fun with it, and I mean, y'all know. I feel like you have to, man. Yeah, I think uh, I think the biggest thing for us was work is work and. When the work is over, you know, whatever bullshit went down during the day, that's over. It's it's done, you know. Any kind of uh, disagreement or not seeing eye to eye on something or whatever the case may be, it's just spilled milk at the end of the day. So, you know, just let it roll and work's done, it's done. I mean, we just move on from there. Just, yeah. You know, I mean, we got to see each other the next day, so. You think, you think it's pretty easy to reset? I mean, I know some of you guys don't get that much sleep every week. Um, I mean, I, I mean prop... I'm a young gun. It's easier for me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on the cusp of not being young anymore, and I love it. He's towing the line of being young. I'm telling him when he hits 30, it's like overnight. It's a game changer. When 3 hits, yeah. Oh, man, when that 3 It's a new world when 30 hits. I mean, I think, I think for me, you know, I'm able to – not that I'm able to really rest, but just the fact knowing that we have such a solid team here, like Sheldon and Dusty, you know, and the rest of the crew, you know, not everyone's here today, but Giselle, Jake, Grecia, Riley, Ed, the whole team that comes through. Um it's definitely for me. It's a peace of mind knowing that at least the wool and I aren't away, or things are being handled the right way. You know, if we're running behind, we're running late. I don't have to worry about if food going on, not going on. Are they doing things the right way? Things are being done the way they need to be done. And so, you know, in that sense, you know, I definitely find peace with that. That, you know, because I know before it was just me and East Wool, and we'd be texting each other in the middle of the night, like, oh man, should we go back and check on this? Should we go do this and go do that? It's like, dude, this is our days off, man. And for this, we might as well stay over there all week. Well, and there was some sleeping in the pit room, too, back in the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Wednesday through Sunday. Wednesday through Sunday, yeah. That was big. That was big. But that see, was rough. But, but now it's really nice because now it's – it's. I got down the schedule to where, you know, Dusty was able to, you know, get out of here at a decent time, and now Sheldon's here, and Sheldon helps out, you know, Dusty, and now they're able to relieve one another. So that's, that's even more time away from the smokehouse and, you know – so you get to recharge the batteries a little bit more. So yes, I do believe that now we are we have we have that luxury a little bit more now. You know, the guys are able to leave at a decent time, not too late but not too early, and yeah. able to recharge their batteries, go out, have a life, you know, they, enjoy they, time. They, they definitely have that work life balance. Yeah. For sure. You know, that we would hope that they that, that we want them to have. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't want nobody else having it. We, we always said if anyone's gonna sleep here, it's us. You know, after yeah. that, there's no reason to have, you know, guys sleeping here. Yeah. Split the shifts, get a refresher. As much as I know all you guys could probably work 12 hours straight, it's probably not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not. It's not, but it's pretty dope sometimes, you know? It's fun. It's great. You get caught it's up a, in the moment. It's a wave. Yeah. Yeah. I got excited. I did a little baloney pop-up with Roland Smoke in Austin. I saw that. And, uh, and I did like 14 hours in that truck. And I was like, I don't want to do this every day, but it was good to, re- <laughs> to see. Like, I can still grind. I got you. And it was fun because... Those guys are uh, 
you know, Kyle was there for the, kind of the first half, and then some of his guys came in, and they weren't selling my bologna real well. So I was just, I was just pushing them out of the way. They're like, yeah, we have this uh, smoked bologna sandwich. I was like, get out of the way. Yeah. Listen, we got <laughs> – Exactly. You want you want a good bologna sandwich? It's the best one you've ever had. It's got cheddar in it. It's got jalapenos. I'm going to fry it on the plancha, put some fresh pickles, homemade sauce. I mean, that sounds like, good. Go. That sounds good. Oh, it's great. Dude, Sold it every slice. Really bastards up there. Look at them. You guys watching the... Yeah, so, man. You know what I've noticed? They only come when you come now. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last time he was here, didn't they show up? I was going to say I haven't seen him in a while either. We're, there's a there's a uh, a large cell phone tower behind 2M Smokehouse, and uh, there's parakeets that live yep. there. Yep. yep. But yep. there's also vultures that try to come in and uh, <laughs> fuck it up. Yeah, they're, getting they're, getting for their, they're getting ready for the afternoon ravage. It's about to start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're about to take it over. It's, it's only a matter of time now. Afternoon <laughs> <laughs> <Dude>, ravage. <laughs> yeah, it's about to take over. Oh man. Yeah. Yes. Anyways, do you think um, it's uh, do you, do you think it's interesting that like, I mean we're in Texas, so it's kind of wild. But like, even though the amount of growth of San Antonio, there's still like kind of wild animals going on. It's not like it's all you know rats. Oh, and, yeah, man. and pigeons here. Yeah, no, there's a. I mean, there's eight acres behind us. Like, there's there's a good amount. It's all trees. I mean, there's there's a lot of wildlife in there. Like. We'll see some foxes every foxes. now and then. Foxes, and we walked around one time. There's like, look, like there's hogs back there at one point, just yeah. kind of burrowing around, wallering. When we first so, got the I mean, place, was, we had a big old, uh, there was a rat snake in there. Jurassic Park when we first got the place. Yeah, man. man, when we first got the place, it was rough. It was, was crazy. I mean, I mean, there was so many everything, things living Everything here. was here. It was rough. It was all here. The whole whole National Geographic channel? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> every week was like a new adventure. It just... It's like, ooh, <laughs> what are we going to have to fight off this month? I'm like, all right. Do you ever have animals or things roll up on the smokehouse and not realize people are in there? <clears throat> not, not, no, not not as close as like the smokehouse uh, or anything. One, one like day that we're else. one day we're outside hanging out and I put my hand on a on the tree outside. Oh yeah, there was, there, was a, there was a coral snake. It's kind of coming down on. He just pieced me out right oh, then and there. Oh, we had a lizard. Yeah, we man. had a lizard named Larry, but he was in the wood. He lived in the wood pile, but he doesn't live there no more. We don't know where he went. Yeah, I don't know where he's at, man. Kind of sad. He yeah, upgraded he, to uh, right. Alamo Heights. Or Yo, Larry, oh. if you're listening to this, man, we miss you. <laughs> Come R. back R. home. Larry. Yeah, the best barbecue show, a popular podcast with lizards and wood piles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that um. I don't know, man. Uh, stray, stray dogs. We get a bunch of stray dogs. Esau has one at his house. He adopted them. Yeah, him. I adopted one he of them. Adopted one of them. Marty. Yeah, Marty. Damn Marty. He just kept coming by, or what? Yeah, he just kept coming by all the time. Kept he hung around by. the longest. Yeah, he hung around the longest. And, and then Grace, um, Grace fell for him, man. So yeah, my wife was like, "Babe, I really want to take him home," and I'm like, "I mean, I do too, but we already have two, and he's pretty big." And and then there was a big ass storm was coming, and then she guilt tripped me into it, and I was like. I mean, he is pretty old. He looks pretty old. I'm pretty sure he's going to peace out soon. I was like, all right, you know, let's, let's take him, Make whatever. Make him comfortable during his last days. We took, him, we took him to the vet and everything. I'm like, all right, give him a shot to do all this stuff. And then, like, the vet's like, nah, man, he's only, like, four years old. He's going to be good. I was like, ah! That boozled you, my friend. <laughs> and now I love him, dude. Now I love him. He's, I mean, he's a great addition Marcus to the family. Marcus. He's dope. Uh, <laughs> they they fi- they just like can guess how old he is, so they. I mean, like, I get, I mean, check his blood or what? She took she took a guess. She was like, I mean, he looks like he could be four or five, and I was like, all right, I thought he was like seven or eight or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, cool, yeah. I guess. I mean, I don't I don't know how they do it, man. You know, I just I'm just like, okay, cool, whatever. So I just assumed that he's four or five now, so he's good. And then I had to like get him all his heart. And then of course he had heartworms, right? So you're like, oh, you got to go through all that. But now he's there. Brought him back to life. Yeah, now he's there. Now you'll never think he was living in the streets. Rescued by 2M Smokehouse. <laughs> Were you feeding him brisket? Is that why he kept coming by or what? Yeah, yeah. Usually, like, whenever strays come by, we'll, we'll feed him whatever we have, which is scraps. Or, like, sometimes we'll go to the dollar store. We'll buy a bag of food. We try to keep uh, some dog food on hand back. in the back. Yeah. So we'll give they it to come them. through. We'll feed him. Yeah, there's them. a lot of them. There's a lot of them come by. But they don't ever stick around. Marty just stuck around the longest. Yeah, Marty just stuck around. He would come all the time. And then he was trained. I mean, he's, he's very tra- he's well trained, yeah. man. Like, he's good. He sits and does the whole entire thing. And he's Make good. him earn that brisket. Yeah. <laughs> now you would think no. Well, what else has been happening since, uh, I mean, I talked to you guys like over a year ago. You guys have any crazy adventures? Did Keanu Reeves show up one day? Has seen any? <laughs> seen any wild, uh, wild faces Keanu in here? <laughs> um, what has happened? Um, 
I mean, we've we've done we've been on the road a lot more than than ever before. Yeah, we traveled, 2019, we traveled, we traveled last year. a that lot. Was, that was pretty cool. We went to we went know, to we, Korea. We went to Korea. Went uh, that to was Virginia. Really... Their friends in ZZQ. Yeah, uh, went to Virginia. Us Korea. here, we just took a quick trip. We took uh, just to Laredo, go do like on a taco run. Yeah, we did that. Um, How far is Laredo? That's far, right? <laughs> no, too no, far. It was, uh, like three hours. Two, two hours, I think, it was like two hours. Yeah, not too. Just thirty-five south, so. Straight Straight south, we went over there. That's not the town that's Denver, Butcher's Bowl. I, I thought Laredo was like by El Paso. No, no. wait, what? It was just straight oh, south. Straight south? Yeah, oh, okay. it's just straight south. Yeah. And like Sheldon said, um, Denver Barbecue Festival. That was really cool. I mean, which will, you know, to my understanding, we'll be doing that again this year. Yeah, we'll be doing that. We should be doing that's that again. Cool. That's a Brian's event, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brian Wabi. Wabi. Oh, yeah, great guy, man. He's been on the show for like 45 seconds when I was at the shed in Memphis and May. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's, a, he's always a, a fun, wild dude. Oh, yeah, he's a bad man. Dude. He's that a great guy. Is, that dude is running 100 miles an hour, man. I guess crazy. Uh, but, um, <laughs> how good are these tacos in Laredo? Sounds like worth the drive. They're good, man. Really I mean, good. we're just uh, we're always we're always toying with things and like doing research and things like that. So we were just down there. Um, scoping out a couple of spots, and we were hanging out with our buddy Tony Vida, yep. and um, he was living there at the time, so we were just hanging out with him. And he took us to some to some taco joints and stuff like that. Yeah. And then, um, we got to try out some things. And introduced us to uh, to Rivas. To Rivas, yeah, Luis Rivas uh, from uh, Monterrey. So we got to meet him. Nice. That's that's yeah, that's where we met him. So he's a really cool guy too. We, we wanted to cross, but Dusty and I had my uh, our our passports, so. Yeah, we, yeah, we we're gonna cross over to Mexico because we were there for we were there for what? It was like three like days, three two, days, two, three days. Yeah, we were there for like three days, and then we we're gonna cross over, but these guys didn't have their. I wanted to go watch the Lucha Doors. <laughs> <laughs> nice time. Well, I guess it, 2020 I mean, goals I mean, get could, a passport. <laughs> we could cross over. There was just you know, there's a whole getting back thing. <laughs> the bear may not have. <laughs> Get, getting over was. It's easy, easy getting there. Yeah, getting there was easy. It's very getting easy. Back. Well, maybe with that new real ID, all the Texas licenses are switching. Maybe that'll work as a passport now. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, what down. you got a taco suggestion for Laredo? I'm always looking for spots. Um, no what man. Uh, what, what was that? Well, one, was of, that? one of my favorites was uh, queso sabroso. Queso sabroso yeah, was yeah, good. Queso sabroso. They had but great uh, homemade like queso, corn. like that, like what cheese. Was that last no, they're, they're they're tacos. They just called it uh, no, queso sabroso. No, no, no. Yeah, what was that last one? one? Yeah, the barbacoa one. Which one was oh, that? Oh, yeah. Uh, I have it on my phone. Do you? Yeah, I do. Oh, there you go. That's, That's just going to look it up. All right, let, let's, let's, work, let's work closest to furthest. So you did ben Denver Barbecue Fest. Is that, like, uh, is that like Texas Monthly? Is that more of like a smaller event? I think, I think it's more like it's a, a festival, isn't it? Yeah, you know? it's, a, it's a bigger event. It's a, I mean, it's, a it's definitely event. bigger than Texas Monthly. Um, As in more, more people cooking or just more people showing up? Yeah, I think it's more people showing up. Yeah, I think it's more because it goes on for three days. Yeah, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, it's a longer festival. Yeah, it's too, longer. So you got that. Well, it's a Friday evening and then Saturday, Sunday all day. Yeah. So that was cool. That was fun. I mean, we we grinded. For yeah, that, that was dude. that was really dope. Shelly took the twins, uh, and we just we just made we just made barbacoa, barbacoa, barbacoa and corn. A lot of barbacoa and corn. A shit ton of corn, yeah. and then a bunch of barbacoa. Are you, are you are you like pulling it off the cob? Are you no, bringing no. barbacoa from here, or did you oh, get it all there? No, they got us. They got they got us everything we needed. Um, so we just showed up. I just told them to get us the corn. I just told them what kind of corn to get, and then um, the cheeks they got. They were able to source some cheeks out for us, and then we and just that local tortilleria make the tortillas for us. Yeah, they had this. They had this local uh, tortilleria place make the tortillas for us. Which oh man, thank God, because I didn't want to hand jam. I don't even know how many thousand twenty thousand tortillas. tortillas I don't know, um, <laughs> but twenty thousand. <laughs> but I mean, uh, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was well, how a many lot packages of, of them was it? I don't know. It was, I don't know. It was, I, it, was a, it was cases. I mean, they were coming. Cases, they were yeah. coming through the cases. Like, what, like a thousand, fifteen hundred pounds of barbacoa, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it was like yeah, twelve hundred or fifteen. It was over. It was over a thousand pounds of barbacoa. Over a thousand pounds of barbacoa for sure. Showing up Texas so style. So much barbacoa, man. Big. Yeah, it was fun. It was cool. It was cool. I mean, dude, I don't want to know what the salt lick was making. Like, the salt lick had the biggest line, man. They were, I don't even, I mean, if we were at 1,500, I don't even, I don't even want to know what they were making. Uh, so is it like Texas Monthly where you just go eat or you got to pay for the food at each booth you pay, or what? You, yeah. pay, you can do a VIP band or you can uh, go up and pay each booth. Yeah, you can go up and pay each booth. So it's not like we're a thing where you pay at the door and then you just go in and eat wherever you want. Like. You get in for free, but then you got to pay. Oh, so it's a yeah. free event. It's yeah. a free event. Oh, so yeah. it's really a free for all. Yes, it's yes. really a free for all. And everyone's lining up at the Salt Lick when 
you know, in my opinion, you guys are probably slanging something a little danker. Ah, it is what it is. But I mean, I mean, hey, man, you know, the Salt Lake crushes it. Yep. Salt Lake does what they do. Yeah. But um, it's yeah, it's just it's just a different event. You, you're going to start doing a uh, have you seen the, the brisket spike? They do it at Salt Lake now. No, what's that? Uh, they like sent out. I, I got one a long time ago, but they sent out like a, you know, a, a lot of the newscasters in Austin do it. And they literally, you know, the big pit uh-huh. they have in the middle, they like take a spike and they put a brisket on it. And you like take a picture with it. There's just a brisket hanging on a spike. <laughs> so you guys can start doing that, right? <laughs> yeah. Stab a hole in your brisket. <laughs> yeah. That's, an it. That's a new one for me. I haven't heard of that. Yeah, yeah. no, uh, yeah. I don't think that'll be happening. If you if soon. you look up uh, if you look up the Salt Lake, I'll pull it up on my phone in a second. But if you look up the Salt Lake, like on the location, you'll see people. People get to take pictures. They hold up sausage. I mean, and that's pretty cool, man. Don't get me wrong. That's you, you got really to have the photo, right? Do. Yeah, for sure. Everybody's got it. Everybody's got their own. Salt Lake's place. like going to Disney World. It's like the Walt Disney World of barbecue, man. When you go out there, that place. I mean, it's got its own everything. I'm sure there's like aqueducts under the place. Like who, kn- who knows? They have their own sewer system under there. Who knows? The place has everything. I, I mean, it's it's a staple for sure. I love going there, and anytime I see those guys, it's always good to see everybody. They're they're good people out there. We love those guys. Well, and they uh, they uh, put out their own wine now. Like that yeah. parking lot actually makes. Amazing wine. Oh, yeah. And uh, I got so, someone yeah, yelled wedding, at Wedding venue out there, too. Yeah, the wedding movie? venue, yeah. winery. Uh, it's beautiful, man. I don't it's think they make their own beer yet. I mean, give them some time. Like I said, it's it's like straight going to Disney World out there. I mean, I don't know how many acres that place is, but it's good Lord. You I, see, I mean, it's, 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 massive. it's a lot. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. It's, it's a great I mean, spot. It drives nice and everything. Yeah, everything's nice about it. Yeah. It's a home run. Hey, you can take the back way to get there from here, yeah. too. Yeah. That's a really nice drive. That's a really nice drive. I might take that home, depending on the traffic. Yeah. Oh, your best bet. Yeah. Uh, so you went to Virginia to ZZQ. I've only got to meet them a couple times when they've come here. Those guys, it's a great crew, though. And they also, they show up, you know, 10 deep at the snows, yeah. and they're always touring around. Yeah. What would you all cook over there? <clears throat> we made we made, we made made barbacoa. Pork jow. We made pork jow. Pork jow barbacoa. And, we made pork jow barbacoa, and then we made regular uh, we made beef cheek barbacoa. Pork jab? Yeah, pork jow. Or pork, pork jow. jow. Pork jow barbacoa. So, and, uh, so now every first Sunday of the month, whenever we have our barbacoa, we have our pork jow barbacoa as well. So that's pretty cool. And, dude, the pork jow barbacoa is it's really, yeah, it's really good. good. It's really good. It's um, that, that muscle moves a lot, so yeah. it's tender. It's very tender. Oh, it's so good. Um, what else did we do? Made we, homemade did a, th- homemade th- we made uh, tortillas. We made all the tortillas there on site. Uh, we made Corn? our sausage. Corn? Our sausage. And then we took we took all of our pickled items with yes. us over there. Coastal. So we had a charcuterie, took coleslaw, coleslaw. We made corn. We made our corn. We made our coleslaw. Every time um, I come here, you guys got more pickles. It's crazy. Yeah. I, I took too big of a bite out of that pepper when I was here too. Which pepper? Uh, one of the one of the hot pepper ones. The serrano. I just took like a spoonful of them and I oh, was like, Oh, dude, what are you doing, man? <laughs> no. I like spicy. <laughs> I mean, dude, those serranos are dope. I yeah, like they'll put, they'll put yeah. you down. You gotta watch it though. Our well, onions are, are my favorite, yeah. though. Our onions are my favorite. It's like our the bell peppers. Onions are super our bell good. peppers are like on a turkey sandwich. Yeah. Well, and just at, from a visual standpoint, you know, I'm always posting pictures of stuff, and it's like you get this beautiful wave of color and everything. It's not just, you know, not that the meat isn't beautiful, but it's a lot of, like, browns and right. blacks. You get the and, nice pop. Yeah. It's, a, it's fire, dude. And it's I was nice standing right over here at this counter eating, uh-huh. and I think, like, Y'all should just have someone doing that because everyone in line was like looking through the screen like I didn't see him. Like, like just like, is he making a sandwich? What is that? What is that? Like, trying to look around me. And I'm like, I'm holding it up to him. I'm like, this is what you're waiting for. But people get excited, man. People it, get really excited, my f- which is really cool, man. My favorite was I was standing there and this guy's like, you know, it's no matter how famous, no matter how, how many lists you guys are on, you know, there's still going to be new customers, right? And it's just like people are like, I hope this place is good. And I just look at him and I'm like, yeah. Yep, just nod really hard, kind of show them the grease dripping out of your mouth. Just be like, look at me. I have to wear suspenders because my pants don't fit. All right? I like this place. It's probably good. I always tell people, I'm like, just, just come and enjoy the food. That's it. Like, don't, don't expect anything. Just expect to come and eat some food. And if it's good, cool. And if it's not, cool. I mean, do you feel like in, in the world of Yelp and all this stuff, do you feel like people are coming up if they have a problem to try to get it resolved? Or are they... Being a keyboard warriors. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know. 
I'm not in front of house. I'm not yeah, up in front um, of house too much. Yeah, that's, no, that's no, Joe. I mean, people, people don't, uh, they, they never really talk to you about anything they don't like for the most part, you know, which blows me away because if there's something that you don't like, we'll handle it right, you know, right then and yeah. there. Yeah, right. It's funny, we actually had a meeting with our website guys last week, and they were talking to us like, hey, you need to get back to some of these reviews because you have some bad reviews, you need to get back to them. It's like, ah, I'm not going to get back to them, man. We're not going to get back to them. Um, not because we're too good or whatever the case may be. It's just that, look, man, you can always email us. We can, we can settle this thing. If there's a problem, we're more than happy to fix whatever's wrong. But I think there's so many people nowadays that they want attention or they just go about it the bad way, and uh, we're not going to give that kind of, uh, you know, not going to give that kind of attention to people. Yeah. You know, um, and so, you know, we're, we're here all the time. So if there's ever an issue, you can talk to any one of us. People know to grab us. Um, you know, the lines are always open on, on the email. Hey, you didn't like something? You know, there's people that have emailed us. And there's one lady, she just said, you know what? I thought um, the food was a little too salty. And we handled it. I mean, we'll take care of it, you know. Yeah. We, don't, we don't expect everyone to come in here and love every single thing that we put out. We understand that we all have different, uh, you know, taste buds. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, man, I mean, we just really want people to come in here and have a good experience. Yeah. You know, and there's too many people that come in. If they don't like it, they'll come in, they'll eat everything, they'll leave and then type up something. And I don't it doesn't quite make sense to me. You know, well, and it, it, it doesn't matter because the people who are legit will come talk to exactly. you and just say, exactly. hey, man, I, you, know? Exactly. You, know, you think yeah. I can get a little more of the brisket? This one. Yeah. I, I don't, yeah. You know, I want it uh, lean, not moist or whatever, you know, and we'll, and we'll take care of it. But. Yeah. You know, um, of all the places to have a complaint, it's like it's so easy to talk to all you. I mean, people, yes, there, yes. there's a little bit of social anxiety growing in Just people. Just come let us know. Yeah, but yeah. It. And we're not, you know, we're not, I don't, you know, East Wool and I, none of the team here really. I mean, that's one thing we preach every morning before we open up. We kind of have a little powwow. It's like, look, man, good customer service, good customer service, good customer service all day long. That's what we want. And don't get me wrong, you know, sometimes visually we might not look the friendliest, but. It's nothing personal. It's just we're running and gunning too. We're you know we're trying to put off small fires here and there, and we're trying to keep count of what we have left and what's going on. And you know there's so many moving parts to all of this that you know all you got to say is hey man can I talk to you or you know even if it's just to talk chat it up. You know we we'll always try to make time for everybody that makes the time to come out here and visit us. Um, but me I'm just a little more old school in the sense that you know if there's something you don't like, just let us know. And you know we're not trying to argue or fight with anybody. They just handle it, fix it. You know, reasonable on. people. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, and this is the last place I'd ever try to take one of them, like, crossed arm, serious pitmaster photos. Like, the best part about this place is the, the lightheartedness. Exactly. You know, I want everyone <laughs> smiling so in my <laughs> pictures. There's all these guys posting. I mean, it's not bad. You know, like, like yeah. Ben Sasani's killing it with barbecue confessional. Right, but, right. But it's, like, so serious. I'm like, bro, just because it's black and white doesn't mean we got to act like it's some <laughs> old picture. Somebody had to wait five minutes. The Great for Depression of exposure. barbecue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. but that dude's killing it. He's telling stories yeah. and and showing people kind of behind the scenes, you know. And it, it's it's I, super funny. I think um, I think with the line and with the people, you know, uh, I think one thing that I definitely noticed being in the front of the house is just like there's like that intimidation factor. There's a lot of folks who come by who've never had barbecue. Sheldon and Dusty can definitely talk about that. And you know, if you're not sure what to get or you're not sure what we even have here, just ask, man. Hey, you know what? I've never heard of brisket or what's fatty, what's lean, what's yeah. moist. This is in Manhattan, you know. Like actually, I think. I, uh, when I was here, uh, I wrote a post about waiting in line, and mm -hmm. it's like in other cities, if you don't know what you want when you get to the front, you'll get <laughs> throw chewed you out. out of line. <laughs> yes. But here, it's like it's whatever, you know. No one, no one in the line is like worried about a few people in front of them, you know. No. Like you can take your time. That's yeah. uh, uh, barbecue is all about going slow. Yeah. If you want to get yelled at, go to Portillo's and. <laughs> 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 Evan and I both went there and we're like, what's happening right now? Because you can plan what you want. As soon as you get to the menu, they're just screaming in your face the whole time. So it's like uh, whatever that last stand place is. If you want to go get insulted, just go to Portillo's. Yeah. You'll just get roasted the whole time you're there. And, and for actually wanting to enjoy I love the food there. I literally go there to get roasted just so I could eat because it's, it's worth it. It's total pandemonium there and you get screamed at for the 20 minutes. Yeah. But I love the food there. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, we... We try to give every, you know, we want to give everyone the attention they deserve when they get up to the counter, you know. And so, you know, I know sometimes we're in a rush, and it may seem a bit rushed, but it's nah. it's nothing intentional. We're just trying to keep nah. the line moving. And I mean, Sheldon and Dusty Prince, do a great job. Prince Street Pizza, Prince Street Pizza in New York. Um, when I went for the first time, I ate there. By the way, it's delicious pizza. Like, holy, holy shit, it was really good. Um, the guy opened up. <clears throat> they opened up like forty, like forty-five minutes late. They didn't care. They opened up, and then it's like, you have to know what you want, man. Like, the guy, the guy, like, they don't, it's not like, oh, good morning, how you doing? It's like, what do you want? Just like that. It's like, what do you want? 
you don't know? What do you want? You know what you want, right? All right, come on. And it's just like, I was there, I was standing in line, I was watching it, and I was like, this is the fucking greatest line I've ever been in. Like, <laughs> this is great. Like, this is so good. You have, a set, you have a sense of anxiety when you get to a line because they make you double, like you're, you're second-guessing yourself. Like you already know what you're going to get, and you get there, and there's somebody screaming in your face, and you're like, I had it all planned out, but now you just blew my mind right now. Like, I don't know. I, wasn't, I, didn't, I didn't realize I was going to get yelled at That's when you just walk out? Eh, yeah. I'm not hungry, man. I'm good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's intimidating for some, for sure. But yeah, I here, wanted a bagel instead. Yeah. I mean, we get new customers here all the time that – I mean, at least uh, it's, it's kind of an ongoing thing between Joe, Dusty, and I. We talk about, at the end of the day, how many new customers we get, or, or we kind of, like, take a, take a guess of how many new customers we're going to get today. So it's kind of fun because a lot of people come French in. French fries. I'm not, we get asked, every now and again, we'd ask some, some things that aren't on the menu, obviously. Some erroneous <laughs> questions. Yeah, French fries is the most popular between French Dusty and I. Rice. Rice. French I mean, fries. My first one, when I first started cutting here, the first one that, like, absolutely blew my mind was I need to get that uh, the green chili enchiladas. <laughs> that was the one that blew my mind the most. So yeah, that one that one caught me off guard because the lady the lady and, and the gentleman were like, hey, oh I thought this was a Mexican like restaurant. And we're like, I mean it's definitely owned by two Mexican gentlemen, but it's a barbecue restaurant. But yeah, it's you know, it's fun interacting with new customers. Yeah, for man. Sure. When we first opened, it was a uh, turkey legs. Turkey legs. Turkey, turkey legs, legs, man. Turkey legs. Turkey legs was a big one. People were like, you got turkey legs? No. You gonna make turkey legs? No. You got French fries? No. You got enchiladas? No. What do you uh, got? What do you got? Not that. You got chicken nuggets? No. <laughs> no. It's like what? You don't have a kids menu? <laughs> no. Yeah, man, it was great. You don't have tea? Now it's just tea. Now it's just tea. The tea's tea. tea's the big one. <laughs> Will we ever have it? <sighs> Probably not. I thought y'all had hats, and then I came in, and one of you, I think Joe was like, "We've never had hats," and I'm like. <laughs> Uh, I'm crazy. <laughs> we do, yeah, we do things. Items. We do things sometimes. Like sometimes we'll just make like hats, and then we hand out to just people. And then next thing you know, people are like, "Yo, man, let me get one of them hats." And we're like, "Oh, we don't have hats." Yeah. Oh, those things. Now we were just playing around with. It was stuff. a small. It was a small collab we did with Supreme when we first. Oh, started. so there's a hat. <laughs> I'd be stoned. <laughs> Sold out. The, Supreme the line wishes, was... <laughs> dude. Supreme wishes. <laughs> no, we did, we made some when we first opened up. We made a few, and it was like only ordered like ten of them, and. You know, just for family. We're just doing the pop-ups when that yeah. came about. And um, Shelly got one of our first ones. I mean, the problem, and I'll be honest, the problem with the caps is that the kind of hats you will want to get, they're pretty expensive, man, on our end. And so for us to sell them, and I just don't like the price point that we'd have to push them at. So we want to get them. It's just we're just trying to find someone to do the design and the style that we want. And then, you know, make it, make it, we want it to make sense for the consumer as well. Because, yes. you know, when we look at what we're paying and what we got to charge, it's like, man, I don't. Make them 50 that. bucks. I don't care, dude. You guys will be the next. The line will be longer for the merch than the, the, <laughs> the barbecue. Make them 50 bucks. Uh, <laughs> San Antonio is a different, San, San Antonio di- different, different, it's, different demographic. It's a different, you know, it just, I feel that San Antonio is just, um, just educating the consumer a little bit more. That's, that's what it really yeah. is. Well, and, and I'm, you know, I, I, I'm trying to create this show and monetize it so that I can really, like I'm almost full-time now, but I really, really want to be like full, full-time. And you look at lots of different income streams, but y'all can't like don't think about San Antonio like yeah, yeah, make I them mean, for the world, don't bro. Don't get me wrong, man. We do, and we'll figure it out once once You'll we get a hat. We'll be shipping to Scandinavia want, like before yeah. you know it. Yeah. I mean, that's that's another thing we're doing. Yeah, I know Fiesta medals. We got to start working on Fiesta medal. <laughs> t-shirts. t-shirts. T-shirts is always a big one for sure. Yeah, t-shirts always a big one. Um, stickers is always a big one. T-shirts. We have we have, we have a bunch of cool little like ideas that we want to have. Um, as two of them as socks. Like, two of them socks are swaggy. Oh yeah, man, we have two of them socks. Um, those two of them socks are really dope, man. They're cool, though. They're, they're really legit. cool. Yeah, they're comfy and they're really cool. I like them. Um, but yeah, we have a. That's one thing me and Joe are working on this year, and that's our online store. Hopefully, that'll be up and going. Maybe by the end of the year, who knows? But that's something. That's definitely something that we're working towards. We'll have a bunch of cool little things that people can get. Fiesta medals is Fiesta medals is just something that we have to do. Or maybe if you, or maybe Fiesta T-shirts. Yeah. I kind of like the Fiesta shirts a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, so do I. But, but um, people love. I mean, but in San Antonio, medals. man, people. I mean, Fiesta medals are. It's huge. I mean, that's big. Fiesta medals. Me- oh, yeah. Medals. So like when Fiesta time comes around here in San Antonio, so many places around the city, uh, not just restaurants, but retail places. Everywhere, like, really. I mean, grocery. I mean, you stores, can even I mean, make your own medal if you yeah, wanted to and sell it. You know. And uh, people buy medals. They put them on there. Like a badge? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just like and they, have, they, they, they kind of have like, like, like a, I don't know what you call it, like a sash. It's like a sash. Yeah, like, like a, sash. a sash. And they have all their medals on there. And they even, they're so big that um, they even do um, like these metal exchanges. 
and stuff here in town. It's like Pogs, how big Pogs was back then. Oh, yeah, man. It's like that. It's only, intense. Only it never fades out here because no. Fiesta's, Fiesta's every, every year. So it's, a, it's definitely a moneymaker. Yeah. yeah. All right. That, that, that's cool. I just found out about a whole other little <laughs> soap. Come, Dude, come back oh. in May when Fiesta's yeah. going yeah. on. Yes. Everywhere you go is going to have a medal, and people seek weak. out certain it's medals from certain restaurants because they only make a handful of them. Yeah. And if you get one, it's like the new shiny item that everybody wants yeah. to get. And then the next year you, cool. can, you can resell it or you can trade up for the next one. I mean, like I say, they have all these little kind of trunk shows that they do this stuff at. Are you, uh, you guys make medals? Uh, we're looking into it. We actually have a website that reached out to us the other day, so uh, I haven't okay. talked to you Swole about it, but <laughs> well, we'll probably talk nice. to them and see what's going on. Well, it's, 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 one of, it's one of those things you got to start doing now. Well, let me know because I'm redesigning my whole store for new merch and all that stuff for the end of the month. So if I can be of any help, yeah, appreciate to all your ideas. But I'm I'm not kidding, man. If you guys like, if you want to put a hat out there for some crazy price, like don't worry, don't, don't feel like self conscious about it. Sweet. We'll we'll yeah. pay it. Sweet. Yeah. All right. You guys heard it here. Hell, 100, Yoni said hundred and fifty dollars a cap. There you go. Yoni Let's said. go. Let's go. We were thinking about doing Stetson, so you want to do a <laughs> limited edition Stetson? You got, you got like the a derby? Re the resist all? Yeah. 100X? There it is. Put the, put the metal, put the Fiesta <laughs> metal like right there, center on the hat. The 2M Fiesta cap? Hey, man, that's a great idea. I'm just saying, there's guys on the West Coast charging $40 a pound for brisket. Like, oh, you know, man. you just got to do yeah. it. I know. It's, yeah. it's crazy, man. The boy can dream for $40 crazy. a pound I mean, on brisket here, for sure. I mean, we're, we're currently we're not going up on brisket, even though we are pushing the Akaushi. Um, you charging the same for Akaushi? We're, we're charging the same for Akaushi. Wow. Yeah. There you go, folks. I've been talking about how the price of brisket is, is lower than it will ever be. Every day it, it, it threatens to go higher, and now is the time to go get you some brisket because <laughs> – you can get Akayushi for the same price. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, and, it was, and it's just, I mean, it's for now. Like, there's no telling how long that could last, yeah. right? It was one of those it's things just, that we just discussed. And, and you know, there's, we never want to have to go up on things we don't have to. Obviously, you know, um, Tuma Smokehouse isn't about greed. We're just about putting out a good product, making sure the lights stay on, doing what we got to do. Yeah. Um, so when, you know, we started talking about doing the Akayushi, you know, Eastwell and I sat down and talked about it. And it was like, look, man, for now, let's see how it goes. And we don't have to go up to an outrageous price. We won't. But, Everything goes up eventually, so with time, things will probably change. But as of right now, we, you know, we're doing the, the Akaushi, $20 a pound, and we're pushing it all week long. Last week, the last two weeks yeah, have, been, have been all Akaushi. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and which, beef sausage. Yeah, which makes the beef sausage Akaushi beef sausage as well. Yeah. You know, some people came in, they wanted to chop a, a chopped sandwich, and Sheldon wanted to cry because it's chopping up Akaushi. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the best chopped sandwich you ever had, in my opinion. Yeah. For but sure. um, I mean, we just want to make sure first that Heartbrand can keep up with the demand, and uh, you know we got a good relationship going with them. So hopefully, it's something that we can have every day, and that's well, what we and, want to do. And I'm I'm going to go back to what you said because I don't think anyone thinks y'all are f the furthest from greedy. You know what I mean? You guys give your days, you give your nights, you know, you you give your greatest ideas and your hard work to an amazing restaurant. So you know, if your prices have to go up, I don't think anyone's going to assume that you're just looking at yeah. dollar signs. Yeah, and I mean, you guys are ready. You guys, you guys put so much work and so much love anytime, in everything. You charge whatever you want. Yeah, any, any, anytime things go up, it's always, it's always for. There's always a necessity. You know, it's always a reason behind it. It's never yeah. like, oh, Eastwell wants to go get a new Lambo, so maybe it should be forty-five a pound. Vroom, vroom, you know? vroom, vroom. <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, I mean, at, at the restaurant, you know, it's, it's the it's, weekend Lambo. You know? it's, it's, it's quality. It's quality. It's the employees. It's everything that we try to do here. You know, and that stuff costs. So. It just takes a minute, but you know we'll we'll figure it out. And like we said, you know we really want to continue pushing Akaushi and the Heart Brand here, and that's the game plan. You know, unless East will find something else that's crazier out there that'll shut us down. <laughs> I did actually. <laughs> I did. Olive For the olive olive fed wagyu. I had I had I had looked into this olive fed. <laughs> <laughs> to this olive fed brisket. I mean, don't get me wrong. Just the gourd's like fucking. It's like fucking A five brisket and shit. Um, and then, um, and then they got back to me, and then they were like, t they like told me the price. Were like, yeah, you know, this is this is what we're thinking about, and blah, blah blah. And I was like, cool, man. It's like, eh, maybe once a year or something, we could like have some fun with this or something. I was like, twenty dollar no sandwich or something. I mean, it 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 wouldn't be twenty dollar brisket. That's for sure, man. It'd probably be like, I don't know, fifty five. <laughs> It's that West Coast brisket, yeah. Uh, and I mean, it's crazy what they're doing with beef now, massaging them, feeding them all kinds of things. It's uh, I mean, yeah, man, it is, it is, it's yeah. I mean, they're getting crazy with meat nowadays. That's for sure. That's for sure. Getting better. 
it's getting better so, and better. I feel like it's only getting better. You know, the quality of the product is only getting better. Yeah. I mean, which is which is great. Which is which is what we want. You know, we want to we want to give our customers the best, the best that we can, the best the best that we can afford, and the best that we can give them. You know, and um, that's definitely something that I've always pride ourselves in here. The more that the consumer wants that product, the more that we get to cook that product. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so if if people want you know good beef that's you know well raised and stuff like that, then Very well then raised. then we'll be able to supply it for sure. Exactly. Well, and. Uh, Where's this olive-fed farm? Is that in Texas or what? No, man. It's, uh, it's Japan. Yeah, it's like in Asia. It's probably like in Asia somewhere. It's in Japan. Oh, okay. I think it's, it's, in Japan. In it's in Japan. Gotcha. Kyoto? In Japan. I was going to say, if you want to go do, we can make a little commercial, show them eating the olives, and then say, this <laughs> week <laughs> only. <laughs> I mean, yeah, eventually. I'm, I'm pretty sure we could do something fun with them. Yeah. It'd be really cool to do some fun with them. We'll yeah. see how it goes. Well, I'm guessing you probably stopped in Japan on your way to Korea, huh? No, man, but we had talked so about it. We uh we were uh we wanted to because when we got there, we didn't we didn't have time for nothing, man. It was like, it was yeah every, work and leave. almost every minute of that whole entire day was it was a, a twenty three hour by it was a twenty three hour trip, and as soon as we as soon got, as we landed as soon as we landed and we got it with was our like host, go time. we went straight to the kitchen and we wouldn't even go to the hotel room. I mean, straight to the kitchen. Dusty and East Wolf started grinding, seasoning, and I was just helping out and. You know, we didn't, we didn't go back to our rooms that night till I think it was like one or two. Yeah. And then we we're up again the next morning at like five or six. Yeah. You know, so it was nothing. It was definitely wasn't a vacation. It was a great trip, but it was a lot of work. I mean, yeah, it was grinding. We're, grind, we're grinding it out for but, sure. Uh, but uh, flights from Korea to Japan were only like 60 50 bucks. bucks or something. But yeah, it was only like 50, 60 bucks. <clears throat> Do I have any good? Yeah, yeah no, we're good. Keep going. So, um, so we had definitely talked about it. We were like, dude, if we could have had this whole entire day to ourselves right now, like maybe maybe we can go, or maybe if, if, if we can get out of this for a couple hours, maybe we could fly over yeah. there, check it out, have some fun, and fly back. But it didn't happen. Yeah, the, it was a great experience, man. I mean, the, the city of Jeonju was amazing. You know, definitely wanted to go back, stay longer, and uh, explore some more. But like I said, you know, we were kind of in and out. Well, you got friends there now. Maybe you can spend a week next time. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, definitely do yeah, have friends there now. Do. It's a long flight to spend twenty three hours there. <laughs> Dude, it was a ridiculously long flight. Dusty ripped his sandals. Dusty no. forgot his proper charger. Okay. <laughs> Still to this day, though, coming back from Virginia, the Philadelphia flight was the worst that flight sucked. of all time. Yeah, you're right. I'll, dude, I'll, that ta- I'll was take the, the, that we, was we figured out how to do the Asia flight. Like so, like coming back, it was not that bad. If you eat a if you eat a meal, watch yes. a movie, pass out, and then yep. watch a movie, like you're, you're good. Yeah, there's, there's, there. a, there's a system to it. Yeah. But like I don't know what it was about like and coming seats, back from ZZQ. You, you got the right seat like, too. We didn't have good seats, and it was like a pissed off Philadelphia flight. We sat on the tarmac for the longest, it seemed like. It was like, like an hour yeah, just sitting the there. The They're kind of just cruising yeah, around. Was bad. I don't know. That one was that one for some reason. Yeah, and then we got off like the two flight. We were all trip, pissed right? off. Yeah. Like, everybody's like, God, just hurry up and get home. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> Philadelphia is a crazy happened? place, man. Like, we were in Philadelphia for 15 minutes, and I was like, yep, this is Philadelphia <laughs> right here. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but, but, yeah. But other than that, it was cool. What would y'all cook in Korea? Peaches. Barbacoa. Barbacoa. That was so. At first, it was like, okay, it's gonna be a barbecue trip, and we were like, cool, you know, let's do it. And they were like, hey, let's cook. Can you guys do brisket? And it was like, yeah, we can do brisket. Can you supply us a pit? And no. So okay, so brisket was a no. So it's like, okay, well, if we can't, if you can't get us this, then I would recommend we don't do it. You know, the last thing I hate, the last thing I would hate is for us to go travel all the way to Asia to represent our city. And then we, you know, cook them subpar, subpar barbecue because we didn't have the proper, proper tools or whatever. So, uh, brisket, brisket was out. Beef ribs was next. Beef ribs was out. So, so then beef cheeks was the next thing. I can cook beef cheeks in anything. So, um, we went ahead and did that. And then sourcing the tortillas was really, was really, uh, was really tricky. So we had took, we had taken everything with us. I had actually uh, vacuum sealed some. Uh, some uh, barbacoa I froze it and stuff we packaged it um and then I, I i took some seasoning and i took everything to make tortillas and we were going to do that and, and then when we when we went into korea we got busted for it so <laughs> they got they got rid of all that stuff so all of it a, yeah everything so that was a no dice so so the only reason we brought that's because i was worried i was like well i don't know if they're gonna have the cheeks in time i don't know if they're gonna have tortillas I mean, how the hell are you going to get tortillas in Asia? And, you know, luckily they, they figured it out, man. We had, we had amazing people helping us. So we were, they were able to figure everything out and we were able to do it. And that was really Found cool. Found maize in Asia. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, we didn't we didn't make tortillas. They were already made. So they came packaged from somewhere. I was like, okay, cool, man. We're just going to do it this way. Mission Korea ta- Mission. tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I talked to Cisco before we left. I was like, hey, do you guys do Asia? And they were like, no, we don't. And I was like, well, we'll figure it out. That, that was fun. That That's an amazing wild ride, though. It's pretty badass. That was neat, yeah. Yeah, man. And just being over there. Just, yeah. you know. Eh, just. I, was, I was thinking about it when Sheldon was talking about the road rage here, like, there's no road rage over there at all, man. At all. I mean, at there's all. peace and tranquility. Like, yeah. you just walk in front of a car and they just stop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we're all looking around like, what's happening right now? <laughs> Conformist society. It'll, it'll do that. Yeah. It's crazy. But, I mean, uh, yeah, it's a different way of life. But it, it was is, really, really cool, man. Yeah. The people were super friendly and the weather was beautiful. I mean, yeah. everybody there was great. Everybody we act- interacted with and met was a... Uh, you were near the coast people. too, right? Not not that close. Not that, not that close. close. Not, not that, that close. close. Okay. Not that close. But yeah. I, I act cool. like I know stuff about geography. It's all right. <laughs> I don't even know where Laredo is, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> On the border. <laughs> yeah. On the border. But yeah. But yeah. yeah, man. That was that was a really neat trip. It was cool. I th- I think just being over there, we were like, damn, like look at where barbecue brought us. Like yeah, brought yeah. us all the way to Asia. This is pretty crazy. This tiny, I, tiny little barbecue joint. I'm 100% sure it's not. That won't be your last trip either. Got to do a. You got to do the, the the tour. Go Singapore, Thailand, yeah, Korea, Japan. The, the two the two M World Tour. Yeah. Two yeah. M World Tour 2021. Two World Tour. There you 2021. go. 2021. Damn, dude, that might be a <laughs> that real might thing. be pretty cool. I don't know. Do yeah, it. You need. You got to clone Dusty a few times. So you, you got some people <laughs> Get working here. A couple here. Dustys, a couple Sheldons. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's well, that's the nice thing now is that like now. We can we can we we can bring Sheldon with us to do things. Dusty can hold it down. We can bring Dusty to do things with us. Sheldon can hold it down. You know, if, if Joe decides to take both of them, I can hold it down. Or it's you know, we can all just rotate. I mean, it's really nice now that we're developing this team, and it's not. I mean, it's not just a team, man. Like these guys yeah. are phenomenal yeah. at what they do, and yeah, they grind. So they much, grind so much more than a team. I think that's why even Eastwell and I we don't mind. You know, if there's something going on that we can't go, with these guys do. So be it. I mean, yeah. like I said, we know we know the company's in good hands. We know the food is in good hands. Yeah, and that's the, that's the dream of, as an owner is being able to walk away and be confident that things are going to look good, taste good, you know, that people are going to be treated right, and yep. you know, it's a it's a slow grind to find those people, you know. It's a very slow grind. I think on on WWY especially, it's like we have a lot of regulars that come to him, and it's and it's like really important for a small business like us to impress the regulars and give them the treatment that they deserve by keeping us like going like because they're they're like legit like for real so like if one of if one of us is gone and someone else is here and they still trust that the other person that's here is going to take care of them and treat them how they always get treated and that's what it's about for sure i mean just just seeing that familiar face and you know kind of i love i love when i see the line inside and there's people there and they're kind of like you know i see these guys pointing at them hey what's up and and it just it's just that i feel like that that doesn't happen that often these days you know in, in the restaurant industry and um I love that we're able to do that here because when we first opened up, that was always the thing was, you know, the mentality was we want to invite people kind of into our home and just hang out, you know, kind of like we're doing right now. Just hang out, have some good food, have a good conversation, enjoy it. Whether you're in line or eating already, um, I think that's always the best, you know, to me, breaking bread with people is one of the best things to do. And to see the people excited in line and to have the regulars, it's just, you know, it's an honor. It really is. You guys got to do like a VIP dinner. It's like just, just the two tables on the porch. Get to hang out with the crew. That would be cool, man. I think so. Um, and that would be cool. That would actually be a really cool idea. We've we've talked about doing some pretty cool dinner stuff, um, like having like some, like some maybe like prime rib dinner, or like something. Like I I always want to have like a like a parrillada dinner st- uh, t- uh, style thing. Dusty always always cracks up and stuff. But I would love to do something like that. Like have have fun like that and maybe invite invite like some a big open fire or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, big bonfire. <laughs> Burn down all these. Well, that, that's that's the only thing in the world really more popular in Texas barbecue is the a la Pardilla, open fire, like asador. That's a that's what everyone's, you know, churrascada and a lot of those places in South exactly. America. That's the party, dude. Exactly, exactly. So probably something like that I think would be cool. We'll see. We'll yeah. see how it goes. I mean, I don't know. We're always we're always toying with a bunch of ideas. We're always thinking of things to do. And I think like something that's great is like the great things that make Central Texas barbecue great or the same thing does it make that particular like style of food great too is like that just traditional like fire like just og like 
freaking crazy ass stuff spinning hanging yeah. wrapped up however however you want to do it just all over yeah. and, it's, and it's always like around a group you know it's always like around a group of people hanging out and just eating and that's i don't know there's something about that it's awesome yeah well and it's it's a uh, it's it's approachable you know i'm i'm you know not shy so i'll just walk right into the pit room but those <laughs> people like to watch you cook especially in events like that they love to see things sear and flare ups and and it, it just it Show. It's a show, yeah. It's a show, a really cool show. Yeah, um, one of one of uh, my favorite things to cook on right now is uh, Sheldon's Dome. It's probably one of the coolest. The cookers. Death Star, bro. Yeah, Death Star. the Death Star is probably one of the coolest things um, I've cooked on in a while. I mean, I love, I love, I love working those thousand gallon smokers, but it's like after a while, it's just like, I, you know, we need, we need something else. And uh, Shelly, what Shelly's done with that dome is really cool. So that that's definitely something something really neat. The butcher spell uh, stuff that y'all made. Was yeah, so man. The, uh, that was and awesome. then and then of course like we have we have some Carson Rodizios and stuff. So that, so it's really cool messing with that. That was really neat. So I mean, Shelly's Shelly's the one that turned us into that. Want to talk about that show? You want to talk about that? <coughs> yeah, the the Rodizio stuff's pretty cool. I mean, if anybody's been to say like Fogo de Chao. Black, black's hot. Black's hot. Afternoon hot block. Um, yeah, it's it's actually really fun to cook on those radizios. They're, I mean, it's it's basically if you've ever had any kind of sort of Brazilian style steakhouse, uh, churrascarias and so forth. Um, uh, Blake Carson brought this to the United States um, through Kickstarter a few years ago, and and I got involved with him and got to be friends with him, and then so I ended up uh, I ended up picking up a few of the things that he offers now, and it's just like a mobile. It's, it's just like having a mobile restaurant. It's pretty impressive, the kind of things that you can do with it. So um, having fun with that, uh, you can make some of the best food I've ever had. What's great is uh, the picanha, and hot wings is like the, the thing that I do on there the most. Um, it's probably my most favorite thing to cook on there, but um, we did uh, the picanha for the butcher's ball, and uh, that turned out really nice. People seem to really, really enjoy that. So uh, it's definitely something that, that open fire cooking, I think, is, is going to be the next wave, I think. I think we're all. I know a lot of people are talking about whole hog and whole hog starting to pick up. Uh, it's it's making a lot of of waves here in Texas right now. And it, I mean, it's it's great. That's what got me started cooking a barbecue many 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 moons ago was whole hog cooking, and I and I definitely love that stuff. Um, open fire uh, is it's just fun, and it's and it's a delicate balance of everything. And um, I mean, you can torch something in a matter of seconds uh, if you're not watching it properly. And so. And, and, and it's, it's really cool to just show off your chops when you're cooking behind a giant fire with coals, and especially if you're dangling several things. Um, on the Death Star. Yeah. Uh, especially on the Death Star. <laughs> that Death Star's cooked more tortillas than probably anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that thing's been on a tour of tortillas for like two or three years. But uh, what's cool is you can put so many on there at a time, so that's what's great about it. Uh, but, yeah. Maybe, maybe the, the 2.0 restaurant, you put a big hood in the middle and just have that as a centerpiece. I mean, it would be cool. It's going to be a lot hotter in there, but yeah, it'll be, it'll definitely be cool for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, ha- ha- have you guys? I mean, obviously, it's you're you're grinding right here. But has there been any thoughts about or dreams of a different restaurant or another change in the space around or anything like that, or y'all just kind of grinding too hard to even worry about it? I mean, we obviously we got dreams and goals, man. You know, I think um, right now there's still so much here that we want to do here at on WW Watt here at 2M that uh, we just want to focus on that um, you know but you know absolutely we sit down and we talk about the vision and the goals and the plans I mean nothing worth really mentioning right now but right now you know the plan is to grow here where we are you know and yeah. um, and and once that you know once we kind of close the chapter on that you know on that story then the, the new one will begin but um, as of right now you know just trying to get more seating I mean seating kills us seating, seating kills us you know um, and especially, you know, especially with uh, we plan on doing dinner. We still plan on doing dinner this year. Uh, that's the game plan. And, uh, you know, so we definitely have to get more seating for something like that. But um, see some room back there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 There's, yeah. Pl- there's, plenty, there's plenty of room. room. There's plenty of room. Um, we got plenty but, of room. But I think that's where we are right now. Because um, some, you know, Eastwell and I, we kind of go off on these wild tangents of, oh, man, we should do this. We should do this. And it's like, all right, let's reel it back in. And. You know, and then Sheldon will come in and show us something, and Dusty will come in and show us something. Oh, let's do that. And it's like, hold on, hold on, let's, yeah. let's tap the brakes. And, you know, we want to do things right. We want to do things, you know, um, 
as we can afford them and and you know we don't want we don't want to be uh on the line for a whole lot of money with the bank either so you know i think uh doing it kind of the old school way of slow and steady wins the race it's kind of um the game plan here at 2m but um but definitely definitely with dinner coming you know i, I can definitely see us making some more room trying to fit on some more tables some more space um you know and then we have that that second pit that shelly here got us and um you know he did a wonderful job on it so you know it's going to need a new place to showcase that as well so uh, well and speaking time. of uh i get a ton of requests on pit home pit builders people building pits people talking about pits is there is there a I mean is this a, a classic Shelly build did you guys put some twists on this one uh tell it tell us what makes it what makes a good pit a lot of smiles I mean, well, I mean, both the same I mean it's a really cool pit man uh Shelly Shelly put a lot of thought into it Shelly Shelly put it. a lot of thought and a lot of love into it for sure um I as far as how it cooks I do not know. Uh, we haven't we haven't fired it up. But if it's anything like his twins, which I'm pretty sure it's it's exactly like his twins, if not better. Um, just the way that this man works is pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. But I know it's going to cook the way we need it to cook, and it's going to look really dope while it's doing it. And it's got some really <laughs> neat things to it that that Sheldon Sheldon came up with that um, that we all think here think is really fucking neat. So. Yeah. We'll see how that turns if, out. If, you're, if you don't know Sheldon, everything that he does is done with purpose, you know, and for and the long style. And, and for the style. long haul. And yeah, style. style. For sure, man. Well, I feel like so many days, you know, so so often style comes first, and then you find out it's a piece of shit. But um, when you do things the right way, the way Sheldon does, it's it's different, man. Yeah. You know, and and that's the thing about what what Shelly brings to the table is that, like I say, he he brings it with purpose. There's it's not just a vision. It's it's for it's for a certain reason. Yeah. And that pit, you know, I don't have a doubt that it's gonna cook. Great. Yeah, the way we need it to. The way we need it to. With, and, and, and in style, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's that. I guess you got me excited to see this pit. Dude, it's really cool, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited for it, too. <laughs> Is it here? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, I'm out. <laughs> no, but yeah. Yeah, but uh, other than that, I mean, it's, I don't know. I want to, hopefully, hopefully one day we'll have, we'll, have some, we'll have some really fun toys and we could be, I mean, look, man, I want, I want a crazy ass fucking smokehouse one day. You know what I mean? I have, I have, I have a dream of this amazing smokehouse and one day we'll have it. Um, but slow and steady, we'll get there. And then when that day comes, it'll be pretty dope. You let me know. I'm trying to grind this year too. So I think Sweet. I told you last time, you know, yeah. I'll come and work a shift or <laughs> whatever. I'm a, I'm probably going to uh, work with a team or not a team, but I'm going to work with uh, someone at Windy City to get a free pass. So. Nice. But I also just want to cook and throw some cameras in the, by the pits. And I, uh, you know, my, I, I was cooking more briskets when I first started the show. And I just cooked one on my buddy's 500-gallon, uh, the smoke trail. Eric Faust came by. We cooked for the Super Bowl. And I was, I mean, it was an H-E-B brisket, so it wasn't as fancy as some of the nice ones you all get. Okay. But, uh, but I did not. I, I, I went a little over with it. I was like, oh, I got to get my chops back. So I'm happy to jump in and, and work a shift or whatever. I'd love to be around. Y'all masters. Awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, just swing on by. Yeah. Swing on by. Should be good. Door's always open, man. You already know. I'll, I'll, we'll have to talk schedule a little bit. It was fun to schedule this. I, I've been excited about it for, I was in Ohio last week, and I've been excited. Just like, oh, we're just going to sit down. I'm going to push. I've never, I've never even run the cameras this long, so something might catch fire. Who knows? <laughs> in I don't want to say I hope they do, but I hope they do. Y'all yeah, were the first one. one I <laughs> Uh, they do. You know, I uh, one of these cameras. I'm um, sorry. Go ahead. No, what, what happened? No, no, no. He he was saying uh, things tend to catch fires out here, and I was like, oh yeah, that's right. And I was, what, what are these fans caught fire? Uh, one of the fans oh, nice. smoking up not too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Push them to the limit, man. Yeah. But yeah, but one of these cameras was uh that it was the first little camera I bought to shoot episodes, and you guys were the first ones. I think I actually broke one of the pieces. You did, man. We you dropped something here, and it broke. Yeah. You dropped something That's here, the, and it broke. It, I was like, ooh, that looks good. The new one sitting right there on the table, that little piece <laughs> broke. But it, it was no big deal. They're tough. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's a uh, – I, I really want to be, like, the embedded journalist, you know? I want to be the guy that's, like, like literally in the cut, you know, you hanging out. you quit your job out. for this, man, right? Yeah. You would quit your job. You're, I mean, you're, I still technically have a real estate license, but – right. I'm not using it. But you're not using it. <laughs> and this is it. Yeah. Dude, that's cool, man. That's I'm excited. Cool. Yes. I want to see how this is gradually going to grow, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I've got I've got 57 episodes that I need to turn into videos on YouTube. So oh, nice. that's like all I'm doing at home is just Kinda clacking the keyboard and 
learning how to edit faster and because like every minute i spend in there is like you know half an hour 20 to 30 minutes of video done not every minute but every like you know i can zip through it pretty fast i learn how to cut pretty quick but it's still like a lot of work trying to what's your uh what's your um do you have like a do you have goals for this year like as far as what spots you want to go hit up like as far as who you want to do a podcast with that's not in texas uh i really want to go to meat stock um i'm thinking about maxing out a credit card just to get to, to Australia. Cool. Um, I'm going to From the Ashes in Idaho, which is uh, near Neck of the Woods. A uh, couple, couple cool people from South Carolina put that on. Okay. Uh, what else is on my list? I have, I have like a whole chart of what's going on. I'm trying to plan February. I'm trying to plan through the end of the summer by the end of this month. So nice. I'm trying to get it all planned out so I can do, I do some marketing work for some restaurants and try to help them look good and take good photos and videos and I'm trying to rack up some money on some freelance gigs Dude. just to get the show going. That's cool, man. You're going to capture uh, Windy City, too? Yeah, I definitely want to go to Windy City. That's on the list. Shelly's been to Windy City a couple times, right? Yeah, I've went twice now. Um, Who'd you go with? Uh, Evan and Leroy and Lewis, one of those guys, uh, two years in a row. And uh, that's a cool place. It's a cool experience. It's like probably the biggest... I don't know that there's a barbecue festival bigger than that one in the United States. That one's just intense. The grind on that one's crazy. Um, it was super hot. It was almost hotter there than it was in Texas this year, which is mind-blowing to me. It was crazy hot. I, I, I don't know. They moved the location I mean, again. Going down. Yeah, people constantly were going down. It was on the blacktop. It was right outside um, where, the, where the Bulls play, right in the parking lot there, and it was crazy hot. But... Um, <laughs> That's a tough grind, but it's a lot of fun. It's basically just a giant concert, country music concert, with uh, some barbecue folks there. So uh, it's a lot of fun. I think, uh, I think if you get a chance to do that when you should. Um, I mean, it depends on who you go with and what you're going to be doing. So each menu is going to present new issues. So whoever you go with, just whatever they have on the menu is going to dictate how, how much work you have to do. And I'll still try to get a media pass and stuff too, but I think it would be fun to just get all sweaty and gross and, 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 and do work. I mean, I... I I went into this wanting to work harder, not wanting to just like sit around with microphones and like lounge, you know. And that's perfect, man. In you fact, make it happen. Uh, uh, you'll, you'll definitely get it. You'll definitely get it there, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> just try to capture capture Dusty's laugh that's in my ear. Well, so go, going back to you know, I, I have people constantly hounding me about building pits. Do you have any any wisdom you want to? drop down is there you see you see some some of those home pits or some of those kind of you know backyard pits that that you you seem to like out there or is it really i mean i know what can't really beat what you're building but <laughs> i'm i'm seriously not uh, anything special i just like um i like doing what i think works best and is functional for for me and then what i'm trying to build i think what anybody wants out of a pit is what you put into it and then what you're trying to get out of it uh, you can try to buy any pit that's that's made in a production line or a custom pit or whatever else, and and that's fine if that's what you want. But I think that if you really want to get something special and unique to you, you have to figure out what you want because you can buy in, any pit and it's going to perform. Is it going to perform like you want it to? Well, you just have to learn it. It's like everything else. You can take something that you buy off a shelf. You could buy it in Academy Sports or whatever, and you could really make it work. But will it do what you want it to do? And that's, that's the science of, of pits. There's a lot of great pit builders out there, and I don't really have to name any of those guys. They all know who they are. They're building some of the best things that are in Texas right now. I, like I said, I'm just some guy that figured out what I wanted, and I built it, and, and these guys uh, liked what I built. And so we've kind of um, collaborated on something that's going to be really special. Uh, there will be nothing like this cooker that's going to be at this restaurant. There's nothing like it. There'll never be another one. This is the most unique, and one and done. <laughs> it's 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 a one. Shelly doesn't. I mean, Shelly likes building them, but he doesn't like building them. You know what I mean? <laughs> this was a this is a one odd that uh, it's there's there's not anything like it, and you'll see what I mean once it's uh, once it's been unveiled. Uh, it has a lot of cool features to it. I think it'll be cool um, for once people see it. But kind of to, to to go back, what your original question was about. Um, what people are looking for. I think, I think you just have to find, if you're going to look for a custom pit builder, uh, then I think what you need to do is find somebody, talk to them, and see if they're willing to build what you want. And, and if it's something that you just really, really, really don't know, then, I mean, there's always, um, 
there's always plenty of internet forums that you can go on. Uh, people ask me questions all the time, and I just give them whatever whatever they're looking for as far as what do you want out of it. Uh, Brad from Chuds is building some of the coolest pits out there right now. I think it's great uh, from where he started, and now he's just <laughs> he's building them at home, which still is great. I can't believe nobody's <laughs> nobody's called the cops on him yet. So good good for you, man. That garage is hilarious. I mean, there, there it goes. <laughs> I mean, hashtag good for you. Chud's Thank barbecue. You, Sheldon. <laughs> Sheldon eliminated the competition. <laughs> I know I, everybody knows that he's building them there, which is great. He posts the uh, one of my favorite videos is he's posting the videos of, of the people pulling off with the pits. That's like one of my favorite things. Obviously, that's in a neighborhood, but Brad, Brad's really doing some cool stuff, man. I love I love what he's doing, and and we talk quite frequently. And yeah, man. Yeah. I got to cook on it. Well, we got to cook on it. For uh, Leroy, for, Leroy for, for the the Roy and Lewis uh, for the yeah. for the pitmaster pit meetup, meet we got to cook yeah. on that chud box and that chud box was that really cool. <laughs> that fucking trailer they have <laughs> is a death trap. <laughs> but other than that, that chud box is really cool, man. I think they've added some windows since, uh, oh, okay. since you guys were there. A little more airflow, <laughs> trapped in a steel box. That day, it felt like working in the basement of the Titanic before it went down. <laughs> <laughs> that thing was hot, but. <laughs> I mean, they had just gotten it back, and I was talking to Brad about it, and they had uh, we had so much uh, so much charcoal in that chud box, <laughs> that thing was humming. Plus the plus the cooker was going, so it was pretty intensely hot. But uh, yeah, it was hot. I think that was was that in August too. Yeah. So it was all really hot. So there was nothing. Uh, was so yeah. I was sweating watching you guys. Yeah, I got a good was, picture of Saul just like standing there sweating. Yeah, it's oh, through the mesh. <laughs> <laughs> they 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 uh they fry all the chickens in there for those things too. You, oh yeah, you came by. Yeah yeah yeah. That's uh. It's not cold that, in there. No that that trailer um that trailer's awesome. I'm glad they were able to get it closer too because before they were having to kind of track across the parking lot or out behind that yard there to get everything. So that was kind of a that was kind of a godsend for them to be able to have that right next to the trailer now, so they don't have to so far to walk. Because I mean we know what it's like to have to truck stuff back and forth and in and out of things. It gets kind of hectic, especially when you're carrying a lot of expensive food and you don't want to drop it because then. Then you just got to throw it out. So um, I totally understand that. But well, uh, and and it shows the beautiful range of you know the top places in Austin aren't all a giant hall or whatever. You know, it's yeah. that they they've got a general manager for a trailer. Yeah, you know, like that's a it's cool how they're ra they're basically lined up so that you know as soon as they get a space and build it out, right. yep. they can just create something. They've got it's not the full staff, but it's just it's just really interesting to me because when I. I kind of, I almost like made fun a little bit when I was like, well, you got a general manager for a trailer, but you know, Sawyer's a beast and she, she puts together catering and all this. And I can see how that, that, that keeps them going at another level. Yeah. They've got some really cool um, stuff there. That whole little, it's got a really great vibe. I mean, the outdoor, um, the outdoor seating, all the food trucks, uh, cosmic coffee. Uh, I remember when it was just nothing out there, just dirt. Uh, yeah. when, when Evan had took me out there the first time when they were getting ready, to, right when he got the trailer, and they're getting ready to put it out there, I got to see what it was to what it's become, having the garden, having everything out there. It's got a really great vibe, and it's yeah. grown so much. So they Can't even find cool a table. Stuff. No, it's great. And everything they bring to the table, I mean, they're always mixing the menu up. That's what makes Leroy and Lewis so unique. Uh, that whole staff, they have a really, really talented staff, and they do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, our favorite week is heat week, though. I mean, heat, it's great because I don't really like eating hot, hot stuff like that, but he and I laugh because I said Evan's going to one-up it again this year with Heat Week. And, well, we always um, just love to see what Evan's going to bring, right? And it's like, all right, man, last year's Heat Week was ridiculous. And it's like, what the hell is he going to do this year? And it's crazy because it's like people are going to go and, you know, and he's going to taste it. Me and Shelly always talk about going to get we eat it, but I know he's going to bitch out and not do it. <laughs> I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I just laugh because I was there. I went there when they were prepping everything for the week, and I was watching Brad make that sauce uh, for those taco shells. I was like, man, somebody's going to the ER. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was the cayenne dusting, right? It was everything, man. And then I was telling Evan because we were driving back from Chicago, and I was like, yo, man, there's this hot sauce joint in San Marcos that has this like stuff, this hot sauce, and it was like a little bottle, and it was like some ridiculous amount of Scovilles, so he went and got it, and I watched them pour that in that sauce, and I'm like, oh my God, some, yeah. somebody's going down, and then the Sawyer's sitting there, she's getting ready to look like she's gonna pull her hair out. She's like, I'm about to make people sign waivers, and so she made waivers for people, because yeah. some people were like, I don't know if I can eat this, and I, I don't know, it's not anything that I, I'm afraid, I, I'm, I won't yeah. lie, I'm deathly afraid. Even day one looked like it was too hot for me, so. The smoking hoe is not afraid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy's a maniac, man. I think he went every day this year, I'm pretty sure he, he finished all of them. I, I, I think he went the year before that as well. Yeah. Every yeah. day, I believe. 
Yeah. yeah. I and think I, Jimmy, I think Jimmy waits for that. That's that's a thing that he looks that's forward his thing. to. Yeah. Year. And I think it's funny because I'm pretty sure that Evan and the entire staff ate what was on the menu every yep. day, yeah. which is impressive all in itself because he told me that taco was the hottest thing he's ever eaten in his life. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that taco is on another level. Like just looking at it, I mean, it's the, no. You said they put they put sauce on the tortilla? They put, uh, like, cayenne dust. Yeah. He, like, dusted the taco shell with cayenne and then refried beans with, I think, more ki- or like Everything whatever. that went on that taco had stuff yeah. in it. Everything, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was ridiculous. Then, then the barbacoa had stuff in it as well. Oh, dude, it was ridiculous. It's, it's something on another level. Yeah. I mean, you really have to be looking to down a whole bottle of Tums if you go eat that. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't even imagine trying to do it. So, I mean, kudos to anybody that really wants to do that. It's, it's not going to be me. I'll, I'll be in there this year. Are I kind of missed it last year. I was busy, but... Yeah, I've been to Howlin' Rays in L.A., and I go to Spicy Boys in Austin. And Spicy go, Boys is the bomb, man. I'll go down on some hard chicken. Fucking I mean, hot as fuck. Y- you, you, ate the hot, you ate the really hot one at, at uh, Howlin', right? Yeah, I got all the way up to the Howlin'. Straight, straight savage, man. <laughs> <laughs> medium plus, man. <laughs> Me, uh, so I medium started plus above is, that. Yeah, medium plus is, I mean, so... So medium plus, I could feel my scalp sweating. So I knew that's the threshold for me. When I can feel my scalp starting to sweat, I'm like, okay, I'm towing the line of maybe an ER visit. So for me. We talked about going to Howden Ray. So I think this year we might might take might take a, like a day or two off right quick. Fly over there, check out Howden Ray's, do that whole entire thing. Maybe try and catch like a moose craft pop up on a Sunday or something, and then head back. Bro, let me know. I'll I'll fly with you. That'd be dope, man. Um, I uh, there's there's a couple good there's a place right by there called Burger Lords that's one of the best burgers I've ever had, yeah and it's like a little window in Chinatown I got I got a map of L A so I would love to come rip with y'all donut spots we've we've talked about that man we talked we'll see we'll see how it goes but I mean yeah I mean hopefully hopefully it'll happen but Shelly always tells us about how and raise and we're I mean we all love chicken here man like we're all love chicken I mean that's We've gone to all the chicken joints here in the city. You know, we've gone to a couple in Austin. We went to uh, Sh- Sheldon recently took me to Tumble Twenty Two. That was a really good place. Solid, really, really solid good. place. You got to ask um, if you really want to like people like me though. You got to kind of like force them to make it hotter because they 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 top off a little lower than some of the others, which I isn't see. bad. It's still what did delicious. You think of Rays? Oh, it was the thing about Holland Rays is like, imagine you guys not only did what you do, but there was a counter that you could sit at. And like you handed people the tray, like it's very, it's almost like the you ever see like Wagyu Mafia in Japan, where they like present and they're like, <laughs> like they just scream and like hand you a sandwich, and it's like this whole thing. Like at Holland Rays, they give you the two-handed like mm-hmm. they present it to you. So I purposely waited and I let someone go in front of me so that there would be a seat at the bar, and then they spotted me eating a hot sandwich, and they're like, hey, you want to try extra hot? And I was like, sure. They handed me a wing, and we were talking, and then they handed me some gloves, and they're like, now you're gonna try Howland. And the guy next to me was like, was just staring at me, like waiting for me to catch fire or something. Like, <laughs> anything waiting. you got to eat with a glove is yeah. not supposed to go in your body, brother. The, uh, That's just my two cents. There, there are definitely, there are already clips on YouTube. I interviewed, I interviewed, I, I asked Johnny Rayzone if I could interview him, like while I'm there, like tripping balls on on spice. I mean, that whole week was crazy because, I mean, it's like. Uh, like your mouth just like like goes numb, you know, like Szechuan peppercorns. It was like that without the flavor. Like you just, it's just so hot. And uh, the crazy part was, is right across the way, it was during the the food bowl. So right across the way, there's a tiny, tiny bookstore. You know, Howland Rays was the first like not Chinese thing in that spot, and it kind of has started this wave. Where now there's a little ice cream shop, there's a little bookstore, and they did. Uh, Aaron Franklin and uh, Sam Jones did a book signing and stuff there. And then uh, Bert from Trudy's Underground and uh, Billy Durney, a good friend of the show, was there. And so I walk out and all these like famous guys are there because they were doing this book sign. I didn't even know that place was there. And I'm like, you know, bleary eyed and whatever. And uh, uh, Bert made me get like 13 sandwiches for him. And they were like, why are you wearing 13 sandwiches? I was like, oh, Bert, other like, Trudy's and Johnny who knows him. It's a whole story. But so like I'm out there and Billy, Billy Durney is like, take it. He's like, I'm on a diet, but I'm going to try this. He's taking a bite of it, and I'm like, "How is it?" Like, I'm not, I can't even make words. I'm trying to eat ice cream. Did you get, like, did you get all hot, or what kind of sandwiches did you take them? Uh, they, I think it was all medium or. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was gonna say, medium to kill plus. Nobody, man. I think I think I got one or two that were kill, spicy. Man. Bro, and it's a sandwich. Like the sandwich is as big as this notebook. Like, they, I don't know if they pound the breast or how they do it, but it, I mean, it's it's a giant wow. sandwich. 
So. I know, man. Well, we definitely want to go. We definitely want to go. It's on our list, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Well, I think Nashville's on our list as well, so we'll see how that goes. I can't, I can't help you all skip the line, but I'll wait in line for you if it helps. <laughs> that sounds cool. <laughs> and the longest line I've ever waited in. I've, I mean, I've, laid, I've waited in line in barbecue forever, but I've never waited in line for chicken. But that, that place is, I mean, I've, I've talked to anybody that I've talked to about that place. It's everything about it, the vibe, everything about that place is just unbelievable. The loud, like, West Coast-type music that's playing, that's what I love about it. Is you never know if you're going to get Ice Cube, West Coast Connection. Uh, who knows what you're going to get in there? It's just great. And, and I love it because it's the open kitchen environment, and, it's, you know, it's, it's great because everybody's running the brigade-type cooking there. And it's just a well-oiled machine, and it's great. I think everything about it is um, what every owner slash business wants to be able to try to recreate is that vibe. Because I didn't even think about the wait after I'd been in there for, I'd wait in the line from 9.30, and I didn't actually eat till almost 2. So I didn't even think about it once I got inside. They made you feel like you've been a part of the family for years, and it was just an unbelievable experience. And, and of course, then I, on the way back, I met Andrew uh, from Moosecraft there again, but he's got like, he's got like the VIP treatment. So he's, 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 he's in like the, the best of them there, which is great. So, uh, they gave me some off cause he knows all the guys in the back. So they have all these off menu type items that are really cool. So, uh, things that I had no idea existed. And so they brought them all out and it was really cool to try all that stuff too. You gotta get the brick. I don't think I tried the brick. I had like these different fries and sandwiches. I think one of them was like Mario's Mario sandwich and then some fries. I think it might be Juice's fries I tried. There was a few different things and they just we had like this cornucopia of different mm -hmm. foods. And I knew that and I knew that I wasn't going to be able to go back there for a while, so I think I crushed enough chicken to kill three people uh, between between Andrew and I. They brought like all this chicken out and I just ate it all because it was so so great. So yeah, it's definitely one of my top places I've ever been in my life. For sure. Yeah, and they have the vibe and the assembly line, and like if someone breaks out a camera or anything, they're like, "Yo, we got Instagram right here," and everyone gets psyched about it. It's a, uh, you know, th they they're smart because from a marketing perspective, you, you know, if if your your crew's always jamming and smiling and pointing at the camera, like that, you, you'll never look bad on a camera. So you just you're you're winning at every level. It's smart, you know, and it's a it's a next level way to do things. You know, he was a. He he was a, a a chef in Tennessee with like Thomas Keller and yeah. Yeah, Sean Brock and like doing all this crazy stuff and threw it all away for hot chicken. Yeah. But he started the wave too. Now it's there's a hot chicken place in LA every week, kind of like barbecue. But you guys uh, you guys are still kind of like the the barbecue dot in San Antonio. It's kind of crazy that way, huh? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I mean, we'll see we'll see how long that lasts. I mean, me and Joe always talk about it. It's it's like the last city standing, you know, so it's only a matter of time. Well, it should and, uh, be fun, though. Do you have any suggestions? Because a lot of people do these barbecue pilgrimages, and they roll through San Antonio, and a lot of them just blast past everything, come to you, and then head to Austin or Houston or wherever they're going next. Do you have any, any non-barbecue stops that are a must in between the people's barbecue? For sure. Uh, yeah, man. Sheldon's uh, pointing down the street. Boys, the down the street. <laughs> Pollo is, Pollo is our jam. Uh, you'll, yeah. You can catch us there pretty much every Thursday evening. Uh, we're always there chilling with the crew. Um, Boys of Salas is a must. Um, Mr. and Mrs. G's has, uh, has some dope food. Has probably oh probably the best <laughs> probably the best fruit punch. Probably the best Kool-Aid you ever have in your <laughs> life. And if you have diabetes or think you have diabetes, you should be very, I mean, even if you very want careful diabetes, drinking just that. Go get that yeah. Kool-Aid. <laughs> it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. it. Actually, I'm gonna go after this. <laughs> I, already, I already had it in my mind. I was like, oh, should have you, you should have, yeah, you should have swung by. Uh, uh, there's another place called uh, Tlaco. Uh, big, big fans of. Uh, we like, we like going there a lot. That's on San Pedro Street. Um, you does? What do you like, man? I mean, we just went to Maria's. Maria's is good. Maria's is dope. Garcia's, Garcia's is always Garcia's good. is dope. Carnitas Lonja is always money. Dude, Carnitas Lonja is... Man, dude, for some of the best carnitas you can get, like... Carnitas Lonja. Carnitas Lonja is probably... Probably some of the best carnitas you ever had. And for those who don't know, explain kind of what carni what goes into carnitas. So, like, carnitas is just... Um, it's just it's just pork. It's just pork. Pork skin. Um, and you pretty much just cook it inside of uh pork lard you know um that's 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 what i like cooking it on um and we usually cook it in a big castle 
so it's a big copper castle. Um, that's how that's how my dad always did it at the house. Uh, still does it to this day. And we just put we just put lard in there, and we cook it in there slowly. A lot of people add different things. Some people add coke to it. Some people add evaporated milk to it. Some people add oranges to it. Um, it's whatever you want to add. Um, I, I I like just seasoning with salt, and then I I like adding oranges, like fresh oranges to it. Um, and then about 15 minutes before it's done, we throw the skin in there and then get that crunch. It, no, it's not really a crunch that you're looking for. It's kind of it's kind of just velvety and kind of just melts with the meat. It's pretty cool. So you don't want it to be too crispy. You got to know when to take it out and you got to, you know, regulate your fire and make sure you're not. So is there any non-Mexican food that you like here? Um, yeah, man. Southerly. Southerly's got some really cool stuff. Uh, they got like uh, seafood and some steaks. Um, they have really dope appetizers. Swinehouse. Yeah, swine oh, man. shit, man. I didn't even swine think about house. Joe. But yeah, man. Swinehouse. Swinehouse, I think, is probably one of the coolest spots in this city. Um, the owner's Joe. His name is Joe. And I don't know, man. He does... I, yeah, I mean, he 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 butchers that he butchers that animal like from nose to tail, man. Whole and whole animal butchery deli. Dusty Bodega. Dusty Dusty talks to him a Very lot, cool. and he brings a lot of his meats over here, and we smoke them and stuff like that. Um, I mean, Dust, t- tell him about Swinehouse. He, he he was trained in New York um, to do whole animal butchery, and he has a deli downtown, and it's just freaking delicious. So then I saw him on Instagram because, of course, you see everything on Instagram before he opened. And he was, like, doing salamis and different stuff. And I was like, who in San Antonio is carrying stuff like this? And it was him. And then by the time he opened and stuff, I went and it was really good. And then me and us all went one day. And we were like, hey, man, like, your stuff is awesome. If you never need anything, let us know. And he was like, I mean, I need to smoke some stuff if y'all want to smoke some stuff for us. And we were like, hell yeah, dude. So. Sometimes they'll just send over like some bacon or some ham, some stuff like that. We never we'll, know. We'll we never see. know what it is, but it's always something cool. Yeah, always something cool. Like uh, last week, he sent. Um, oh man, what did he send? Salami sticks. He his Good salami gym, right? sticks. Good no, um, and then the andouille sausages too. Andouille sausages. Those are money, man. Andouille sausages are good. Yeah, he, he's really yeah, man, good, man. He just makes he's these, awesome. He just makes these incredible and he's a great sandwiches, butcher. and it's like all the flavors are just it's well balanced flavors, and everything's just there. He knows what to put and. And how much of it to put? It's it's just a really cool place, man. What he's, and he's doing there is nice really, really cool. Too. And he's the nicest guy ever, too. Um, right next to him is Pinch Boyle House, and they um, crawfish uh, season is coming. Crawfish season's coming. They they make these awesome boils, man. They make these really dope bon mis and stuff like that. Um, that's a really awesome place as well. Um, those two places are really cool. What do you like, Joe? Not, not too far from them. Jerk Shack. I mean, Jerk Shack. Jerk Shack. Jerk Shack, man. You like Jamaican food? I'm. I'll say it's the best Jamaican food in san antonio hands down man like nobody for can sure. touch them for sure they got goat um i don't know i don't know i don't think i've seen that on the menu, on the, menu. In the chicken and the pork chicken their pork is really good yeah. chicken and pork the jerk, the jerk chicken. yeah that pork yeah. is uh that pork is bomb yeah, yeah. for sure um that's really cool jerk always shack, always, um, always lost palapas at like midnight <laughs> dude what is that Las Palapas. Las Palapas. <laughs> er, literally, literally, every city in America should have like 16 Las Palapas. <laughs> if, if you don't have a Las Palapas to go to at midnight, why don't you I'm, throw chilies in that mix too while you're at it, dude? Uh, is that a dude, chain Las okay, Palapas? Chili and Las Palapas is totally different. <laughs> Las Palapas. 24/7. Is, yeah. Yeah. 24/7. Yeah, that's not terrible. Coca Cabana or whatever. It's kind of like it's, it's, a, it's, a chain, it's a chain. It's a chain. I mean, yeah, if we want to talk about like crappy Mexican chain restaurant, like Mama Margie's is the best. But, okay, dude. but it's but but <laughs> but most people best. just in most cities, it, even in Houston, it's like you get Taco <laughs> Bell or Taco Cabana or nothing, or like or like okay, legit like street food, right? But like no drive-through Mexican places. But in San Antonio, you literally have like Mama Margie's, Las Palapas. Like yeah. in Houston, Cabana even in here? Houston, you don't yeah, really yeah, have yeah, that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. man. For but sure. even even Las Palapas yeah. and Mama Margie's is better than Taco Cabana and, and Taco For sure. Bell. Like like it's just like. Well, and Taco Cabana is so like good. multiple steps above Taco almost, Bell. Almost almost every oh, Friday for sure, for man. Breakfast, so. even, for even, sure. Yeah. But you know what? I I could swear I read an article where there's a couple of them closing What's already. That? Taco Cabana's. Sad news. They closed what? Oh yeah yeah yeah. I saw that yeah. We're always we're always trying to find two things. Mr. Juicy. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Juicy. Juicy. Um, There's always places that we're always chasing. We're always trying to find the next best hamburger and the next best, like, Nashville-style hot chicken sandwich. We talk about it 
daily of daily. Where we Are live. there places here? Burgers, burgers, and Nashville hot chickens. And for me, man, I I will always throw in uh, Detroit style pizza. That's like my Have fucking. Have you been to Jets and Via Three and Three? I, oh, dude, yeah. Via Three and Three is it, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ of all time. Yeah. I worked in that trailer for like three months. <laughs> Damn it, man, that's so cool. <laughs> It's so cool. It, it wasn't. It was pretty lame, actually. Uh. <laughs> it was just a trailer joint, dude, <laughs> run by a bunch of kids. Yeah. <laughs> I was in like one of the satellites too. You know, they made all the dough and stuff in one spot oh, yeah. in the, the big one, trailer, yeah. and I was in like the tiny, tiny, shitty trailer where you had to refill the water tank like every fucking two hours. That's cool. That's cool. Right. Now, hey, man, yeah. Throw a cast iron in the. Uh, throw some dough in a cast iron and throw it in. We the, do. We do. We do. We got we, it. We've messed around with a bunch of stuff back there and stuff. But, yeah, but, but Shelly is right. Like, burgers and Nashville hot chicken is – that is what we talk about Bro, I'll come lot. eat that shit anytime a you come to lot. Austin. I'll take you to places. I mean, the I think my favorite is the Leroy and Lewis smoked burger. I've been Dude, trying to I recreate have yet to that. Have it. It I have delicious. yet to have it, but everybody says it's delicious. It looks delicious. Come get one. We need to get it. I'll buy. All right, man. You're offering. There was, there was this place here in town called Fontaine's, and they had, oh. they had one of mine and Dusty's favorite burgers here in the city. But Cured, oh, Cured's yeah. got that. Cured has good. Uh, mm. How what do they cure, do it? Man. And it's lunch only. And it's don't, lunch only. Don't be trying to come get it in the evening. Yeah. You're not going to get it. Yeah. Like, past 3 o'clock or something? Uh, uh, yeah. It, it, it like ends 3 at 3. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Yeah. cut off. Yeah. So Cured, Cured at the Pearl makes, oh, dude, that burger's dope. Get the double Get, get the double. double or, yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say get, get the double. double. All day. Don't get the triple because it's too much meat, not enough dough. I mean, not enough bread dough. I always do uh, like Pete Terry's in and out. All those I always do a double I mean, with whatever. cheese and then uh, uh, what's it called? Extra veggies and extra pickles because I like the like really thick, you know, yeah. lots Pete of crunch. In and out? Is that is that your jam? Pete Terry's uh, in and out? I mean, it's always a good staple. We're more of a we're more of a Shake Shack. Shake Shack. Oh yeah. And. Actually, the Shake Shack's closest and, place and to my house. And I'll say it, man. Shake Shack is better than Whataburger. I don't care. I don't care. It's better. Well, Shake Shack's not really fast food. <laughs> it's better. It, Shake Shack tries to look like fast food. but sha- I got something to tell San Antonio. <laughs> How many Shake Shacks are there? <laughs> it would be so bad, though. Shake Shack still has the best fries. I, 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 can't love, I love Shake Shack, but I'm a Whataburger guy all day, man. Yeah, I'm Joe a, loves Whataburger. I'm a, I'm a water water water. guy all day. I just download the app. It's money, dude. It's because they all bring different yeah, things man. to the table for sure. Yeah, they do. I mean, Shake Shack's right behind them, but Waterburger's my, it's my thing. Oh, so I yeah. mean, don't get me wrong. Hash browns and a Dr Pepper from Waterburger can be beat. I mean, water but water burger, water burgers? That breakfast burger isn't bad. But it's still, it's still not. I, I still think my favorite as far as fast food is P Terry's by far. Never had them, so we're getting, uh, never had we're getting one. We're getting one here soon. It's yeah, opening in the next like few months, I think. Bro. Uh, for Not ten bucks, I can buy you all burgers at Pete Terry's. <laughs> I like, mean, it's crazy. That's cool all day, man. I mean, we that's can cool. Hope they build a Hattie B's here one day. So. Oh wow! Imagine Dude, that. Uh, Bur- Burger Boy has good burgers. Burger Boy is really good, man. Yeah. Burger Boy here Burger in the city has got some solid burgers. You're not gonna beat that. Is, no, no, you're is that not. Fast food? Be the whole family. It, yeah, it's like a. It's There's been a only staple two here, here in town. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's a dope. staple. They have like this old school burger and fries. I want to say, isn't it called the Working Man combo? I don't yeah, know. I think it's, I think it's called the Working Man, man yeah, or something. You can't man. beat it. It's like this giant double burger, like this big, and fries, and like a drink for seven. Yeah, it's cheap, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy cheap, and it's and it's one of my favorite things here. The restaurant design is really cool, too. They got yeah. probably one of my favorite. The, the new one's, one's favorite, really cool, too. Designs. Yeah, they're really cool. Um, yeah. If you want, like, uh, if you want like upscale food here in, in the city, Bliss is a dope spot. Yeah. Um, How do you spell it? Bliss. Oh, Bliss. Yeah, Bliss. You put a little extra syllable in there. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I forget to open my mouth a little wide. <laughs> yeah, Bliss is really good. Mixily, Mixily, yeah, man. Mixily is really cool. They're um, I'm just writing these all down. That's an experience. That's an experience. Yeah, Mixily's. You have to book that one online if you want to go to Mixily. Like you got to book that one in advance. Book that. It's a small table. Like sit down. Like they only, like they only see twelve. Seven, yeah, I was they only see twelve. Yeah, the table's only twelve. I think they do two dinners and. Two dinners. Um, I don't want to say every night because I don't know when they're open, but I want to say they do four, three. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, nobody knows. We don't know. So they do the a couple of dinners. Ever had in my life. Yeah, it's but it's a really cool spot, man. Is that like super fancy display yeah. and everything? Yeah, yeah. Chef, like three bites. Yes, exactly. But like, so so what they do is they cover like every region of Mexico, like certain regions regions of Mexico, and then they just focus on that and they create their whole entire menu based off of that. Oh, dude, I think uh, it changes every supper. three months. Is it supper? 
over at um, Hotel Emma. Yeah, man. Over at Hotel or, or Emma, there's a place there. called Supper there. That place is really dope. Um, the chef there, Jaime, he's doing really cool things. Um, Botica's another really cool spot. Like, if you want some cool Peruvian food, Botica's a really cool spot at the Pearl. Like boutique, um, but spelled different? Yeah. B B O T I K. Botica. And then at the food hall, they got Bud's. Bud's chicken. Bud's a... Uh, is that national rotisserie? Hot no, no, no. It's uh, rotisserie style chicken. Style. Dude, they got... How about that cornbread? Yeah, that cornbread's, cornbread's good. That cornbread was solid. Is there a hot chicken joint in <clears throat> San <clears throat> um, yeah. There's a, there's a couple. There's a couple. Um, Call Smack Roll, Chi Chi Birds, uh, Atta Girls. Those are the only three I know of. And then there's a couple of spots, like restaurants making Nashville hot style chicken. But as far as like the people in the city that are just making that, yeah, those, those spots. If you want Nashville hot chicken pretty much any time, uh, Atta Girls. Atta Girls is the spot to go. Yeah, that's pretty much what the other the other two on. are in a trailer and they're always moving around so it's kind of you got to keep chase up with them. them yeah you got to chase them but yeah man i mean yeah we're always talking about that we're always toying with things in the back so that's it's cool it's cool chasing burgers and chicken chasing burgers and chicken well it's nice because it's a uh, you know you you can't really chase barbecue here no so and it, you also know that it's like one of the challenges, I felt bad because some of the new guys, you know, one of the guys at Interstellar and another guy was, uh, you know, uh, I, I got a depressing tone from it. But they were just like, yeah, it looks like that that pop up's going to be super fun. Too bad some of us have to, like, work every Saturday and Sunday. You know, it's like you guys don't you guys work so much that like, you don't always have time or the availability to get out and do these things. So it's a it's a challenge to do all that. So it's easier when you've got fast food and. Things are a little quicker because, I mean, how how many barbecue joints do you think you ate at last year? A couple dozen? More? I mean, it wasn't until I, nah, before I moved. maybe. Before I moved here, we would co- we would go more frequently. But maybe now 20? that I live here, but yeah. Maybe 20. It's Maybe 20 places. Less frequent these days. Yeah. Because yeah, everybody works the same barbecue schedule. So it's, it's less and less frequent. Impossible. Yeah. Everybody makes the same barbecue schedule. And, and, the, and then sometimes, man, there's just too many joints to keep up with, really. Like, so many of them. We so. need to do like a Monday tours, or just grab yeah, grab everybody's people. Everybody's closed and, on Monday. But that's what I mean. Like, have a few places open on on a Monday, so that all the other barbecue people can come try it. Who is open on Mondays, man? That's the, I Terry mean Terry Blacks. Terry Blacks. Blacks. Um, Style Switch. Style no, Switch. no, I think Style Switch is closed on Mondays. Yeah, Style Switch is closed on Mondays. Yeah. Who? Uh, you got Price. Pecan Lodge. Uh, I don't know if they're. I don't think they're open on Monday. Uh, maybe, maybe not. not. See? I'm definitely not driving to Dallas for sure. Yeah, we're not going to Dallas. Well, and that's Heim. Heim, I think Heim. I think one of their restaurants is open on. I don't think the one on the river is. I think this. I think the one downtown might be. Yeah, I think the original might be. Open what about on. the third one though? Yeah. They're, just get, they're getting ready to open up now? the third one. Yeah, in Dallas now. Heim's taking over. Congrats, by the way, guys. Yeah, congrats. Yeah. Yeah. Smiley's congrats. just opened back up. Smiley's, that's right. Uh, your old, your old boy Brendan Lamb. Brendan Lamb. Uh, did did you no, guys? No, no, no. I never worked. With you him. never worked no. together. You worked him with Dylan. Him, him and Dylan did. Yeah, yeah. Me and me and Dylan worked together. Yeah. <laughs> and and Goldie's is February fifteenth. February fifteenth is Goldie's. Yeah. So the, the if you guys the, got none going on, go there. The old school Austin crew is go like to finally M all and spread then go out. Go to Goldie's. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To yeah. Quick drive. And, and then get the Goldie's. get the Goldie's. Right before they close. <laughs> right. Before. <laughs> now, man, they're gonna do great, man. Yeah, we're super excited for. I mean, they're really close friends of everybody here, and we're. We're excited for those boys. So it's been it's been a long time coming, but we're super proud of everything they're doing. And you know, it's it's great to see people that you, you know, you, you love being around and kind of grow and finally get to open and pursue their dreams too. So it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. The come has been really neat for those guys, man. It's kind of like it's been really cool. I always laugh and joke with them. I tell Dusty this all the time. I call it the workaholics of barbecue. <laughs> so that's what's great is those guys. Those guys all get to to be friends and and, and get to work together. So, so true. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that. Uh, you know, all their dreams come true with opening that place up. I'm yeah. super excited for them. Yeah, man. It's been, and, and then, like, for me, it's been really cool because I got to see Dylan actually come in, like, to the barbecue world. Like, yeah, he was working at Terry Black's before he joined the barbecue, but then he joined there and it was, like, this fresh kid that, you know, knew some things but didn't know, really know anything, but he had this energy about him and stuff. So that was really cool. And then watching him go from that to now those guys – Opening up Goaties is really neat. And then, I mean, dude, think about everybody that's in that group, too. I mean, everybody brings in their own. Super talented group. It's a very talented group, man. Everybody brings in their own set of skills, and it's really neat. 
I mean, I'm gonna tell that story. It's LeBron and Miami all over. There's a um, there's kind of a cool story, and I think you know we had just forgotten about it the other day. But uh, Dusty and I were talking out in the smokehouse, and what's funny is, um, in the beginning, uh, right after the first pop up from Lytle, uh, when they did the first one here, um, it's kind of a crazy story. Um, I came to that one with a friend of mine uh, from from Montana that I worked with, and at that pop up. Literally everybody at this table was there, and I never, I didn't know who Dusty was. He sat at that table. Grant Pinkerton sat at that table. All the Goldies guys, I had talked to them before, but I had never met them in person. We were all at that table at the first pop-up here, and it's weird to see how things come around full circle, uh, that everybody was here to kind of see how that all started, and we didn't know each other, uh, and then kind of how we're all kind of circled back and, and where we are today. I just thought it was a really cool moment and it didn't really ever dawn on me that I would ever be working with, with Dusty because I didn't know who he was at the time. He, was, he came by himself, I was, I was, sat to yeah. himself over in the corner, and I never, I never knew who he was. I, I was like a fan. I was like, oh, shit, there's Dylan. Oh, shit, there's this whole... I was like, oh, all these guys on Instagram. Holy, <laughs> holy crap, dude. This is it. And I was like, oh, my God, there's Sheldon. And then I, it was like Robert Sierra, Heinz 57 Robert Sierra, and I was like, that Robert Sierra. Texas bold like, and spicy. Like, I was like, I was blown away. I was like, this is this is barbecue. crazy, man. This is crazy. <laughs> that was awesome, man. That was crazy. Yeah, I just thought it was a cool story, so I just wanted to mention that. That at one time, like we were sitting on picnic tables behind before the. I mean, you weren't even in the restaurant yet, out doing pop-ups right here in front of the restaurant. And then there were two t- picnic tables with some awnings set up back, and we all sat out here and broke bread, unbeknownst to each other that someday we might all be working together. I just thought it was a really interesting story, and it's, it's kind of that would have been an awesome picture, man, to have like yeah, that would have been awesome. Guys, Pinkerton, you, Dusty, everybody. It's crazy. That's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. That'd have been really cool. and we all we all literally sat at the same table. <laughs> I sat right across. Yeah, I was sitting. Right, there's only the like two tables. And, <laughs> and all the gold still guys is right here, and then. And then Dusty's sitting at the very end of the table, and then y'all had some family here. That's where, that's where I met some of your family for the yeah, first yeah. time. So it was kind of cool, um, the whole thing, to see who comes out for these things and, and show the support and that network. Uh, I think it was a really cool thing. So um, I don't know. I just wanted to share that. And people complain about social media, but even now you're like, I wish we had a picture. And it's like, I, I love capturing all this stuff because I see, I think about it like that. Like, imagine in, in 10 years you listen to this interview. Who knows? There might be this whole strip. You'll knock down Crown's Furniture and uh, Southwest Nipple Supply sure, and sure. just, like, <laughs> make it the block. Not the nipple plant. Yeah. It's crazy because I have pictures of all the food, but I didn't take a picture of all the people that were here. Well, we got pictures somewhere. We have pictures like, funny, when we first started working. It's funny you say that because uh, we, we, we had talked to the crew maybe a, a couple months ago, and we were like, hey, man, anytime anybody's walking by and, like, it looks – like, if you guys just want to snap a picture of anybody doing anything, like, if anybody, just you know, it. just do it. Like, just snap pictures of any of us, that, you know, working the line or working in the back or being in the smokehouse because we don't know when we're going to have these memories again and stuff. Or it's nice to go back and, and remember these times. Yeah, and such. As two of them evolves, you're going to see the changes. Exactly. You know, look, even now, for us to see where we were and here right now, I mean, it's crazy, man. It's, it's an awesome thing. It's a really awesome thing. Yeah, it, it seems slow while it's happening but then all of a sudden you look back and you're like damn yeah 2019 was lit it's true man i mean it seems pretty it seems pretty fast pretty when it's over, yeah man <laughs> first year got his first, first lambo year in business we got our first lamborghini yeah first lambo <laughs> for deliveries what is Camborghinis. No, don't, just don't just don't drive it through the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> you got to come when it's Lake 2M out here. That's my favorite Dude, day. Sometimes, sometimes I see some high dollar ro- uh, like cars uh, roll through here. And I'm uh, like, oh, that uh, parking lot ain't equipped for that car, my man. We have a regular. I bought that Tesla the other day, and I thought it was going to be just totaled. <laughs> we have a we have a regular that brought like a '57 Cadillac by here like two weeks ago, and uh, he was like, "You want to drive it out of the parking lot?" And I was like, "No way, man. <laughs> That's Maybe all I'm you. Pontoons. That's all you, dude. I'm not." <laughs> I'm not trying to drive that. Touch that car at all. No. Well, maybe we, may, maybe, maybe there's a resurface planned in the the next couple of years. Oh yeah, definitely, oh, yeah. man, well, definitely. Yeah, honestly, we we do, but the problem is that we don't have a fenced up, so we want to get a fenced up because these eighteen wheelers come through here every like every day. They, that's what ruins they, our that's parking, what ruins lot the parking lot. lot. Are they like pull U turns in here and stuff? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. eighteen yeah. wheelers, school buses. Maybe that dude might pull in in a little bit. With yeah, semen I mean, pro, the I mean day, there could be a fleet of Vulcans out here. Parking yeah. in the parking lot. For sure. At the end of service, I'll come out. There'd be like all these rigs just parked right here. And like, shit. So man. it tears up our whole entire. Tears it all up. up. But the game plan is to get it fenced in really nice, and then do a nice pavement and get. And the fence will keep we're them out. We're gonna do like, uh, yeah, do like yeah. Bucky's does. We're gonna put a sign up so there's yeah. no eighteen wheelers in here. So throw a bunch of nails. Just do that. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, I like. Uh, I like the Bucky sign because it just shows a picture of a truck, truck. and no. <laughs> 
I love it. I want to steal that sign. It. Every time I see it, I want to steal that sign because it's the greatest sign. <laughs> they get straight to it. No. No. <laughs> Go kick rocks. Yeah. I love it. It's a good sign. But yeah. But yeah, I mean, we'll see. That's it. You got, you got to come up with a funny way to do that. Like, put that sign in, and then on the door, just put, like, some random famous barbecue person. It's right. No. <laughs> can't come in. Put my face. It'll be funny. No. No. Uh, also, I mean, it sounds like you guys have been grinding on the, the food scene around here. Uh, is that is that just kind of, like, you just like to try new places, or do you guys... You guys know a lot of the owners of restaurants and things in the area. Yeah, um, so we've 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 definitely met a couple. Like we've definitely met a few chefs in the city and stuff like that, and so that's been really cool. But I I, I think just between the four of us, we just love to eat, man. We just love to get ideas, and I mean, for me, I know it's always like for me anywhere that I go, it's like I'm always trying to pick up something. You know what I mean? And it's like. And you're like, oh, that's really neat, or oh, they did this, and you know, Joe talks about dinner and stuff, and for dinner time, I want to like, I have ideas, like I want to change some sides up and bring in some new things, and I like you seeing know, the flow, like yeah. When I go, I like to see the flow of things and how it's all working, even though maybe it can't be applied necessarily here at 2M, it's definitely something to take away. Um, but I think you know, like you will say, we all like food, and a lot of these places that we've mentioned, they're all local, San Antonio, yeah. and each so, one of us takes something away, like yeah. we all, everybody has, you know. Everybody looks for certain things, like you know, Dusty gravitates to certain way, to a certain area. Shel- Shelly picks up certain things. I'm a certain way, Joe. You know, and it's really neat whenever we Kinda go out. Kind of comes and back eat. full circle, and it's like, did you catch that? No, but this guy did, and this right. guy did, and it's pretty cool. Man. You get to ask a lot of educated questions. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I just, I always or at like least what we think is educated, yeah. right? I like to roll around with uh, with barbecue guys because you always ask way better questions than I even would because you're looking at it every day, you're smelling it every day, you're you're seeing the way that they, you know, like uh, there, there's a pit builder I won't mention, but they uh, they went from kind of like making grills to making these big pits and they started posting all these videos, these guys cooking on them and they're they they are like, I don't know who's cooking on them, but the, 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 the flats of the briskets are curled up and then I sent the video to Joe Yim just like, hey, check out this new cooker. And he just like sent me all these like emojis. It's like what the hell? And he pointed out something I didn't even realize is they're just dragging the briskets along the grates too. And I was like, oh yeah, now I'm like extra careful when I pick up my briskets. You can just rip all the seasoning off the bottom. Exactly, man. And you it's guys see stuff so that I don't even things, think yeah. of. Well, that's yes, yes, that's exactly how we all are. Like you can you can play a video for us, and you know, we're we're we're, 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 we're deciphering the whole entire thing, you know. And Shelly's gonna pick up something that I didn't, but I'm gonna pick up something that Shelly didn't, and it's really nice. It's pretty cool, man. Um, but it's—I don't know. It's also kind of—it's also kind of messed up of us sometimes, or whatever. But not really. I mean, it also causes a lot of anxiety as far as—and we're never saying that we're doing everything the right way. It's just what we like to do, and everybody does their own things a certain way. But I, I think we all kind of share the same dream of if you're going to spend this kind of time with something, you want to give it the best care that you possibly can. If if I'm going to be cooking a brisket for 12, 13 hours or whatever, I don't. I want to make sure that the end product is going to reflect every minute that I put into it. Otherwise, then, then what are we cooking for? I, I, I know that we all share that same drive as far as trying to put out the best possible product that we can. So I think uh, being delicate with whatever you're handling. And, and, you know, like I said, to each their own, if that's not how you want to handle something, you do whatever you want. But, I mean, for, for us, uh, we kind of give everything uh, a little bit of TLC. And, and I mean... You can read it on the walls. It's it's written all inside of the restaurant too, and it talks about love and everything else that goes into this. Uh, I think that kind of reflects the the kind of care that we put into each and every day that we come out here. Um, and, and Dusty and I talk about this all the time. You got to come with a game face every day, and every day is going to present a new challenge. And uh, you try every day to make sure that the day before um, you try to improve on that some. And you can't win them all, but you you really try to you really go up to the plate hoping that you're going to you know go go three for three today or whatever you want to say. I think it's. I think that's the dreams to be able to consistently put out the perfect product, and we're always chasing that that perfection. Uh, perfection doesn't really exist in my mind. I think you're just chasing the next best day, and and just improving and building the craft, and that's really what we like to do here. And I know there's tons of other people doing the same thing, and you know I commend everybody else that's in this grind like what we're doing every day. It's it's tough, and the weather changes things. The heat brings other challenges. Every single day in Texas changes, changes the game, and Dustin and I talk about it all the time, um, how we're going to atta- like approach today's cook or what, what is the weather doing today that's going to affect how things end up in the afternoon, uh, whatever it may be. Um, 
I think that uh, adding that little extra TLC really brings some some really good things to the table. And it reflects in the food. I, I would assume that people just don't give reviews based off of not really wanting to say something good. I, I feel as though people don't go out of their way to tell you something good unless they absolutely mean it. And, and I believe that. So um, the, proof's, the proof's really in the end result. And, and I think we're doing great things here. And, and, and there's a lot of people doing great things. And I really believe um, that little extra really means something. It means something to all of us for sure. Shelly for president. <laughs> it's your stump speech right there, bro. It's killing it. Let them know. Uh, thanks, man. Really nice. That's just my two cents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever that's worth. <laughs> worth probably worth about ten, ten to twelve compared to most people's two cents. <laughs> wrap around the axles on certain things you know it's <laughs> spending time cooking ribs might blows my mind ribs might be the hardest thing to cook man i'll i'll probably <laughs> argue with anybody that ribs is the hardest thing to cook for me personally uh they are the most difficult and smallest window of opportunity to to get right and if you miss it you miss it and you got to start over the next day you can't bring them back with, with brisket it's a little different sometimes you can reel them back in depending on where they're at in the cook. Um, ribs, though, if you've gone too far, you've gone too far. And then if you haven't gone far <laughs> enough, you're going to see it on the block. And then that's the thing is the anxiety that we all share is, is I have to see the first two. If, if I'm cooking that week, I want to see what I'm putting on the block, and then Dusty will let me know if something's lacking and if I need to improve. And, and we keep that open line of communication because, I mean, if you're just blowing smoke up my ass every single day, um, that's not going to help us get better as a whole uh, I, I, I know I'll never be perfect, and, and in my mind, I don't, I'm not chasing perfection. I'm just really trying to, to make sure that um, I'm putting something out there that somebody's going to make memorable, whether it's their first time here or if it's their 50th time, because they came here to eat. They came here to eat ribs. They want that rib for a particular reason. I mean, John Brotherton said it the other day when he was here. He loves coming here just for the ribs, so I'm glad we were able to make that for him again when he was here. He enjoys them, and so... For him to come back and say, I love this rib, and for us to be able to follow up and, and, and be able to consistently give them that product that they want, I think that's just, for me, that, that's enough for me to be able to sleep at night is to know that we're giving people exactly what they want consistently. What's, what's a, you know, you don't have to give it all away, but what's a few secrets to, to cooking a good rib? How do you, how do you find that window? <laughs> um the, the, the thing that we get asked the most, uh, and I think that's where a lot of people get, get really bogged down, is on temperatures and things like that. I don't care what the temperature is. Um, it's all about the visual look of it and, and, how it's, and, and how the bark is building and then how it bends and how soft. And if you're cooking in foil, if you're not cooking in foil, these are all variables. And each, each person cooks ribs differently. Dusty and I cook ribs completely different. Uh, but we're all trying to get to that same that same way of, of, of finishing. And I think for some people, it's you have to learn and understand the science of how that meat is cooking. I think you can cook whatever you want. If you don't understand at certain phases of the cook, it's going to be doing this, and you're not looking for these visual cues, uh, then I think that you just have to really do your homework on what the ribs, or whatever it is you're cooking, not just ribs, but anything else. But, but for ribs, they go through several different phases of cooks, and, and they're at certain temperatures. They all change. If you cook it too hot, if you're not cooking hot enough, if you're not rendering out enough fat, if your ribs are fatty that day, if they're too lean that day, if you got shiners that day, uh, if if you're cooking a different breed of hog, these are all things that come into play. And and a lot of people kind of laugh when you say that, oh, we're cooking different things, and and all of it should be very similar. And that's true. Some of it is very similar, but um, just I can tell you right now, but cooking two different types of briskets, uh, that completely changes the game. Like we. We have to completely rethink things when we, when we switch to over to the Akaushis for a while because they cook way differently. Just like um, your run-of-the-mill, uh, whatever, whatever you get at a store, like those aren't going to cook like what we're cooking here, whether it be an IBP, whether it be a Creekstone or Snake River or whatever it is. They all cook differently. So I think you just have to get out there and you got to get – if you really want to learn the craft, then you have to learn the craft. In, in, in our world, you can try to cheat it as much as you want, but I think you really have to understand and really learn what you're doing. And, and those are the people that are going to gonna really kind of shine and stand out in my mind. Uh, those people know who they are, and you know the people that are putting the time in and learning how these things cook. Those are the people that uh, I respect and I really enjoy. And, and I love cooking with everybody, but 
you could always tell. Like I have, I have a lot of anxiety just cooking with this man. Um, it doesn't matter how. how he pointed at Saul. <laughs> I get anxiety just like he gets anxiety if he, if he's standing around. Like I always feel, um, is it good enough? Um, what's 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 going to be wrong? I, I just want to make sure that I'm trying to make sure that that we are putting out exactly what the vision of of these two guys here had in mind, and, and that's really where, where I want to be at. If, if these guys are happy with the product that we're putting out each day, then that's the only opinions that really matter to me is because is, is we want to be a direct reflection of what they're putting out. And so, Well, and I think it's smart because you can get caught up in that, like, praise echo chamber. You can get soft that way, and you guys, it seems like you keep each other pretty straight, and, uh, and, and you don't pull your punches when, when it's time to make something good. Can't. Um, there's no time to be pulling punches here. Like, you know what I mean? It Full all swing. It has to be, it has to be where where it needs to be, or or it sh- it it shouldn't even be going out. You know? You so never know who's gonna walk in. You, exactly. You man. never know who's gonna walk in. I mean, not just that, but like, it's not just who's gonna walk in. Like, you should here. I always tell them you treat everybody as if as if they are that person. That's that 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 you know. We're like, oh, look who walked in treat them all like that like oh look who walked in like all of our customers should be treated that way you know like if we're not we're not just putting special briskets on reserve for this special person that's walking by no 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 no. you know john's gonna get what daniel vaughn's gonna get you know let's say or something like that you know and it's just like that's just the way we are and in order to do that we have to have that open line of communication where i do tell Sheldon, hey man you know what this this and this we need to work on this you know and dusty hey man we need to work on this and likewise i always tell them hey if there's anything that i need to work on you also tell me you know just just because our names are on the building doesn't mean we know everything as well you know if if we're lacking in any way and i feel that that's that's the way it should be man because from the cooker from or from the cook to the meat cutter you know it's those those two positions are very important positions and it's like the meat the the cook the cook can grind all night long for hours and hours and hours, but if the meat cutter isn't up to par with it either, then all that all that grinding was for nothing, you know. And I feel that as long as as long as we have everything in unison, then we can make this happen. But in order to do that, I mean, it takes time, and that's that's what I think we're trying to build here. It's way <clears throat> it's way easier when everybody's on the same page. Like what what Sheldon just said, it, like everybody here can attest is the truth because we talk about it every day. And we're all on the same page about everything, so it makes it way easier, you know, like, it, it's like brotherhood here, so it's like, you know, if anything's wrong, we don't have, you know, you don't have to think about anything, you just say it, like, it, it is what it is, and it's, and it's just like everybody's on the same page all the time, because we think alike, like, and if you think alike, it doesn't, everything flows easy, it's easy. I, th- I think everybody... In the barbecue business, uh, sometimes you just have to you have to leave egos at at the door. Um, and and uh, don't don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that anybody here is being egotistical. But what I'm saying is like everybody has to be open to um, creative criticism uh, and and being able to take the good with the bad. Uh, if it's good, it's good. And if it's bad, you have to be open to that, and you have to be open to the fact that um, maybe maybe something wasn't uh, where it needed to be at, and then. You know, you might have been slipping that day or whatever it is. But like I said, Dusty and I go through, for me, like the most stressful part of the day is once everything's off and then it goes to the board and then the first customer walks in. I always like to see what's going out. Even in pre-orders, it's the same thing. Like that to me, I've never really had, I mean, my job before here was uh, was pretty daggum stressful. But I really try to break that mold of being stressed out all the time. But that's the only stress I really have these days is trying to make sure that the product is where it's going to be at. And I I can't control it. That's just how I feel because I want to make sure that this rib looks all the same. I want every rack of ribs to look this way, and I want every brisket to look this way, and sometimes you can't win them all. I mean, one of them might get neglected, and, and when, when, Pete, when you're cooking 30, 40 briskets a day sometimes, um, you try to give every one of them all the love that they need, and it's, it's a hard balance. And then, you know, you just – if you know you're not pulling your weight that day or if, if something doesn't come out the way you want it to, I mean, I'll beat myself up about it. Um, Dusty does the same thing. Uh, we talk. We talk extensively. To everybody. <laughs> we talk extensively about how we can improve on things, and uh, I think that's just uh, the ever, never-ending battle of what barbecue is. And I think that's what makes it such a unique craft, is because every day there's a, it's I a, a variable. 
I burned, I think, probably like a hundred sausage links one day, and we had to throw them all out, dude. That was terrible. <laughs> that was like the... you, you got to save that for Sasani, bro. Uh, that's the confessional. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. You got to save that for. That. <laughs> that was pretty bad. Yeah, man. Everybody fucks up. Everybody fucks up. Quick but. confessional preview. That'll just be. That'll, that'll be leave Sneak some peek. mystery to it. Uh, well, a, and I guess that's a. You know, that's why I always try to cook with somebody. You know, when you're cooking alone at home, you you kind of know. But, uh, you know, and sometimes me me and some, some of the guys that cook together will butt heads on ideas. And I've been trying to play. I, I've been taking all my brisket trimmings and rendering it down and seeing if tallow is something that I should do or reintroduce a little moisture maybe. Um, but it's uh, it's all experiments. And if you're not willing to hear the truth, you're never going to grow, right? Yeah. I mean, that's why we always tell people, like, hey, you know, just be honest. You know, we don't, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not for everybody, you know, and if it's not for you and you got something to say, go ahead and say it. Like, we're always, we're always open to it, you know. We always want to know where we can grow and we can improve. Um, so, I mean, yeah. Plus, There's no hard feelings here. Plus, sometimes you hear hilarious stuff. Like Exactly. It was like, oh, uh, I wanted it medium rare. <laughs> I Y'all mean, have dude, fried fish today? Yeah. There's yeah. You get some odd requests from time to time. You get some crazy ones, um, or like people will be like, "Yeah, let me get that prime brisket," or people will be like, "Nah, just let me get that regular brisket." It's like, well, I mean, it's all, it's all prime. It's all it's prime. It's all the same. <laughs> Slash Akashi. Slash Akashi. Let me get a lean rib. Let me get a rib. yeah. Can I get a quarter pound of beef ribs, please? Can you get a quarter pound of beef ribs. Now what's? Yeah, sure, man. Do you have Do you have like a Do you have like a, a a more educate like do people ever ask for like a specific rib they want one end of the the yeah, ribs yeah. Or, I, I, lo- sure. I love i love i love customers sure. like that customers like that are way better than customers who don't have any idea what's going for sure on. um i think sometimes it's better just tell us what you want you know what i mean because we're not mind readers so when you leave that block we didn't get you what you wanted if we didn't know what you wanted then that's on you so i went to a place the other day and i just asked for half a pound of brisket and i went and sat down and i was like oh all i got was lean <laughs> exactly. That's like, damn, that was my bad. I can attest to that because if you don't tell me what you're going to get, whatever's in my hand at the time or at my reach, that's what you're going to get. If it's half a pound of lean, it's going to be half a pound of lean. So like Dusty said earlier, is if, if you tell me, I love it when customers come in and ask for exactly what they want, which that that one little girl that comes in is one of the coolest customers. How old is that girl? What do you, what do you think? Like she's probably like 10? No. Well, uh, you think me? she's younger than that? I bet she's younger. I bet she's like six, six or seven. I think she's like nine or ten. I thought she Maybe. Not, I thought she she's young, dude. Man, but she comes in. Oh, she's a kid. She comes in. She's she can't eat hardly. She has to kind of look she's up over the counter. She comes in yeah. and she rattles off every single thing she wants. I want a half pound of lean. I want a half pound of fatty. Three sausages. Everything just rattles it's it all great, off. Great man, if you're like, I'm out of that. She's like, all right, that's cool. Um, boom, 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 boom. Like next thing, like she doesn't care. She she's just there she for her order. For that, man. She's moving. Yeah. She's, she's she's a regular. She's got the like, credit card and everything ready, like <laughs> by herself. <laughs> Badass. Yeah. The parents just wait out here or something? I, I, yeah, I guess. I, think so. well, I mean, I, I assume so. For sure. yeah. I mean, I don't know. She she could be driving. Who knows? I think, I think, <laughs> she, I think she's running the block. She's got her own phone, her own she car. Who knows? Tesla, the down? <laughs> <laughs> There's no telling. I mean, I she's, she's a, a she's boss, a boss whoever she's she boss. is. I was cutting on a Sunday, and she showed up, and then her, her mom called. Her mom called. And... um. Because so these guys knew what was up with her, but I was like, "Wow, oh, look at this child ordering right now!" I was like, "Well, look at that!" I was like, "Okay." Well, whatever. everybody ran to the front because we saw her. Like, "Oh, she's here!" <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, um, and everybody knows her already, so we were there. And then her her mom called. She was like, "Mom, I'm ordering right now. I'll call you back." And this, boom! And I was like, "All right, this this kid knows what's up, man. This kid's oh, yeah. this yeah. kid's on it." She she always has a big order too. I don't know who she's ordering for, but it's always a nice order <laughs> <laughs> to go or what? It's always, yeah, to go. always to go. Always to go. Always to go. Always to go. Yeah. yeah, she gets giant sides like quarts of each side. I mean, it's it's pretty awesome. She's a mess around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She she always gets a really cool. I stuff. hope my kids will order like that one day. <laughs> Does she carry it out by herself too? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, because we always ask her if she wants soap. She's like, no, I'm fine, thank you. Yeah. She's like she's like the she's leader awesome. of the Despicable Me like little ye- yellow people. <laughs> yeah. She's just like. And then, like somebody, and then like somebody our age would be like, oh, God, it's been so long. We've waited. You're like, come on, guys. It's going to be okay. Uh, do you know, I, I want to catch this. Is there, does she come on a regular day? There's no rhyme or reason when she comes. She hasn't came. I have no idea. So that was two weeks ago. 
I want to say maybe that was. I w- it might be every two weeks because you cut. It was almost two weeks ago. Yeah. That Sunday but, that, yeah. that she came. As far, it's always a weekend. It's never as it's, far as if it's a Saturday or Sunday. We yeah, don't, it's it could be a know. Saturday or a Sunday. Yeah. Maybe next time she comes through, we can tell her. We tell her parents or something like, hey. Yeah, it's it's great because everybody comes to the front. I mean, the first time she ever came through when I was cutting, I thought it was great. It was blown away. It was like. <laughs> I mean, she just rattled it off. It was, I was asking for a lot of fun. It, I, cut I had to do a, I had to do a double take. I'm like, wow, she really knows what she wants. Because I mean, most of the time, unless it's a barbecue person, because we get a lot of people that are just here visiting, they come here for the first time, and they have a lot of locals, and a lot of people don't order this type of barbecue. Like it's really, it's unique. Even though it's been around for for, for years now, uh, that type of market style barbecue, people come in and sometimes they don't really understand, and we have to kind of walk them through it. And um, it's it's a it's a great experience. Um, for the customers for sure because a lot of times that's the only moment you may ever get with them so you know we try to make sure that that moment's uh memorable for like the, the 30 seconds that we try to keep yeah. people moving because we want to make sure they're getting the best food and the and the, and the warmest food that they can get because you know it's usually between 30 to 45 seconds those those transactions are sometimes so uh, we really try to make it you know as as fast as possible for everybody so they can get in, get their food, get out, whatever they want to do that day. Because we know they're waiting in line, and we really appreciate everybody that comes and waits in this line. Because that, that to me, is one of the – it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's one of those adrenaline rushes for me because I always like checking the door right before the restaurant opens. I don't know. It's like a drug to me. I love seeing, like, that build and see these people outside because they're waiting to get this food. And I think that's what's probably kept me the most addicted to barbecue is just the satisfaction of people enjoying that food. It's, like, it's, it's, it's addicting to me. And I think everybody here kind of feels the same way. I mean, I, I never worked at a place like La Barbecue, so that line at that place, I can only imagine. I mean, I've been in that line, so I know how long that line used to be, but being able to work in that line and see that coming, like, it's like never ending. So it's, there's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of, it's, it's chaotic, it's crazy. And when you're in the trenches doing this uh, for the three to four hours, depending on how long service runs that day, and then when you sell out of food, it's, it's like, it's over already? Like this past weekend was just insane. And so when it's over, it's over, and you're like, wow, uh, we just burned four hours, and I just seemed like I just looked down and opened the first brisket for the day. So it's, it's intense. But for me, that's a rush. I mean, I, don't, I, I assume these guys feel kind of the same way. I, I know I do because Dusty loves to cut too. So thousand percent. I think I'm a weirdo. I love cutting for some reason. <laughs> It's really fun. <laughs> well, you're the but you're but it's take it's taking care of people. It's like the it's like the you know it's the home aspect. It's like uh, dude, it's, it's, pe- it's pe- the pe- most important position. Like I truly believe, it is the most important position at any barbecue joint. That's doing it, you know, cafeteria style. Um, last line of defense. It's the last line of defense, man. It is. I mean, it's all it out is. there because everybody's seeing what you're doing. You're not behind yep. the curtain. Nope. You're, not you're, you're literally curtain. putting it all out on display. Right. So if you don't know what you're doing or or if something's not where it's supposed to be, I mean, it's, it's you're, like you just said, the last line of defense. You have, to be, you have to be everybody's grandma and David Blaine at the same time. Yep. And <laughs> that's what the job is. <laughs> that's a great way to put it, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's – but I love it like that, though. You know, I love I love having people come up to the counter and seeing – us cut their food for them like i don't i don't like the behind the scenes type deal not that there's anything wrong with that it's just that's not what i envision 2m yeah. being like i love i love the engaging with the customer and and you know the the sample giving us giving them sample you know the look on their face when they when they when they eat it just them talking to us about it and you know things like that like i love i love watching that and i love watching my guys you know like get in there and and Knock it out the park. You like, I mean, you like being really proud, good. for sure, man. Like, I mean, I love, I love, I love cutting as much as the next guy here, and I also hate cutting as much as the next guy here. Like, you know, it's just that one thing. It's like you love, you love it and you hate it at the same time. But it's really cool. I love making two M's. Two M's. I surely hate making two M's. Um, <laughs> I, I love, I love six, love six, six two M's in a row is not very fun. Like, like, the sandwich. Like, like, like our, There's like a lot of components sandwiches. that goes into that sandwich. And so what will happen is there will be an avalanche start. One, one two M goes out, and then five people behind him sees it. And oh, then it that's just a starts. big sandwich. Yeah, because I really like cutting pounds. That's like the greatest thing in the world is when you're just burning through it and you're stacking plates. That's like so much fun to me. And then somebody will throw that, that curveball in there like, and let me get a 2M right at the end of it. And you're like, because <laughs> there's like five different things you have to get to make that. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes we run out of something that goes in the sandwich because it has the pork and it has the sausage in there. So if we, we run out of sausage or whatever, it's, uh, 
it's it's like that. Well, do I make one it's without dealer's that choice component? after that, man? Or if we run out of coleslaw because coleslaw is a topping that goes on it, and then most people don't want the topping on it. So there's a lot of components that goes into that. So <laughs> it's uh, it's that curveball. It's a big thing, dude. It's a big thing. Might need a sandwich station or something set up. I mean. It'd be cool only to have something like that, but it's only on Fridays now. Yeah, Tombs only on Fridays. Only on Fridays now. So like you can only get a Tomb sandwich on Fridays now. You can go to get tacos on Thursdays now. Well, and I think most people that are fans of the show are aware that I make my own sandwiches. Yes, this is true. You I, do, I right? got a, I got a, I made a monster last time I was yeah, here. You did. That yeah, was you not did. a small that was super it up. It was dope. And I even I was watching, uh, I was watching some behind the scenes of some food shoots. Yeah. So I actually stacked the ingredients like stairs so that they were like if you looked at it from the side they kind of leaned back. So nice. you can see each thing. <laughs> Learning, dude. I'm trying to learn some new shit every day. That's Master cool. angles. Well, gentlemen, speaking of time flying, whether at the cutting board or in the pit room, you also flew through some serious time here uh, at the table with the show. Over two hours. Sweet. The, uh, sweet. The, the best barbecue megasode with 2M Smokehouse. It's going to be, it's this easy, gonna be a good it's one. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. Yeah. You just talk. Well, and some people don't realize that we always talk for like three hours before we for talk sure, for yeah. an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's we pretty just easy to just keep the time. mics on. Yeah, just keep it going. I just got to make sure I don't have to. Uh, that what are you going to do now, man? That first, uh, that first interview I did with y'all, uh, I had to get up and keep resetting the camera. I don't remember that, too. Because oh, one of no, the cameras. Not, not these, anymore, man. These run. These will run forever. But the other cameras I had, you had to, every 20, 30 minutes, it would cut off. I had to start it up again. You camera would overheat. Again. Yeah, I guess it's not, net, it's not like Netflix when it asks you if you're still watching. <laughs> Are you still recording? <laughs> still Are you still watching? Are you still getting my monthly bill? You're like, you still, still getting my monthly payment? Yeah. Like, who cares? You're like, Are you using bandwidth and sleeping? <laughs> Even YouTube now, I'll fall asleep watching YouTube. It'll shut itself off after a while. They're smart. But uh, I like to I like to put on the sound of the Star Trek Enterprise. Like that hum, <laughs> super relaxing. <laughs> but yeah, you guys did it. Thank you. It's been hey, man, amazing. Thank you, you man. had a great time. This has been I've cool. got a beautiful Long list. I might have to like stay a night in San Antonio next time I'm here and just start ripping through do, these. Man. We should sure. we should do it like a Monday and a Tuesday San Antonio food run. Dude, let's do it, man. Let's do it. Next on we'll the hit list. Up, we'll, hit up, we'll hit up some spots. You got some good spots on there, too. Oh, yeah. Every you time I come here. Las Galapas. Off, Las Galapas. <laughs> double un- underline that. <laughs> well, exclamation points. I'm going to uh, double underline it. Spot, wait, yeah, yeah, wait. I'm going to put like a little dude and, like, and you have I don't know. To go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a top spot for this. 11.45 at night. Put some shrugging shoulders on that one. This is also the kid that eats like a macaroni, a half a sausage, and a big red for lunch. Get and then for Luby's Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Luby's Mac, still undefeated. Luby's Mac. Still this is also undefeated, kid, this is Mac. His, uh, his prime eating hours are, are 9 to 11 p.m. and oh, shit. Probably about 7 to 11. 7 to 11. 7 to 11. Is that your feeding at window? Night, at night, yeah. Um, that, is a, that is his feeding window. <laughs> he's, prime he's, grub he's intermittent fasting for the first 12 hours of the day. <laughs> I don't eat, yeah. <laughs> And right before I go to sleep, that's when I eat <laughs> six times. <laughs> it, it helped when I used to go on motorcycle trips. I didn't eat a big meal until we got somewhere because one, you you don't want to get sleepy on the road, yeah, but two, it you just you just pass out. You pass out like so fast. <laughs> oh yeah, I've I've had to pull over before and just put my head on the tank and like take a quick nap Smart, just to get to the. Ne- you don't want to be at sleepy at all on a motorcycle, yeah, even in a car. To be alert no matter what on a motorcycle, man. Yeah, those things are dangerous. Yeah, unless it's a Tesla, then you can just set it to cruise and pass out. Dude, I always say, like, sometimes whenever, like, traffic bottles up, I'm like, can't wait for robotic cars. Like, should never have this anymore. Shouldn't have any more racks anymore. Uh, yeah, don't get me started. I'll, I'll start talking about, I mean. Well, especially for motorcycle drivers, man. Because, I mean, most of the time, like, either people don't see them or they're not paying attention. You know what I mean? Well, and uh, it's just preventable. It's a, they're preventable deaths. People, un- unfortunately, when something tragic happens, that's, that's a tragedy. But road deaths are just a statistic, so. I mean, 3,200 people died last year in Texas. It's crazy. And there's already 100 on those. Do you have those signs on the highway here? Yeah. Where it says, like, prevent. But that's the problem is that that's all they're doing is just putting numbers on a sign. No one's really doing anything about it. You need to go pull over about a million people on their phones every year. Dude, yes. Bad. Yes. So all of you Bad listening yes. in the car right now, put your phone down. Enjoy the road. Smile at all the pretty put people your around phone you. Down. Just put your phone down. Listen to some music. It's not that important. Yeah. Just relax. It's not that important. You'll get Dusty. there. Dusty. 
<laughs> you don't know that? Guilty? We got a guilty party here? <laughs> don't don't ride on me, dog. What's the what's the Camry? What'd you call your car? The Camborghini. 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 Gotta 2. keep 0. that Camborghini between the white lines, bro. <laughs> Just stay on your I side know, of the we road. We keep it safe. We keep it safe. Phones down, everybody. Keep it safe. Keep it fun. And uh, and I don't know. I I. I like to be around people who are living their best lives, and you guys just you show up and grind every day, and it's uh, it's a lot of fun to watch because uh, it just keeps getting better. So uh, thanks, man. Uh, Thank you. Until next time, thanks, we'll, maybe I'll, maybe I'll hire a camera crew. We'll do a little uh, we'll do a little tour. Dude, that'd be just cool, man. Food. Yeah, for sure. All right. I think I don't see why not. Well, right. you heard it here first. See you later, everybody. Next time. Next time. Yeah. Do-do. Thank you, guys. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I need to back you out of me. The doctor says. Uh, I'm going to the gym with Evan. You've been going to the gym with Evan? You've been going to the gym with Evan? Might have to cut yeah, out what? Yeah, a couple this? weeks. Yeah, you fucking with that thing.